Okay, let's see if I can do something here. Watch this. Ah! How do you like that, pal? Oh, you don't like that. You didn't like that. Two for one special. Yes! <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, BBCS, to episode number 135 of the Broken by Concept podcast. Guest episode today with Mike, also known as Gamer Dad. He's a father, uh, college professor, calls himself an OG gamer, and he's recently gained a lot of popularity through Twitch and TikTok playing League. We actually reacted to him. Yep. Uh, in, I can't think it was two episodes ago, yep. and Curtis had a reaction that we sort of will, will get into. Yeah, we'll get into that. With him. Uh, so we're basically here just exploring the experience of a new player, but more so an older new player to the game. And what their journey might look like. What are some of the challenges they face? Um, you know, and he has, has a pretty sophisticated gaming background to see if maybe that helped him on his journey at all. Um, and seeing, you know, he's obviously passionate about that ergot. We can get into the details with the ergot as well. And um, and you forgot he was a stand-up comedian as well. <laughs> so he's done a lot. Gaming journalist here. He's been in the army for five yeah. years. Yep, yeah, plenty of that. So we're going to dive into a lot of that. And um, this is, and by the way, this we've actually never done an episode like this before with an older gamer. This is no. the first one we did with Jono, but he's not really a, a gamer. And so this is, we're, we're, we're uh, exploring uncharted territory today. I think it's also really good for our audience to say that these are the players that they're sort of playing with in their yeah. games. You know, like there's people with stories and experience and it's very easy to just be like, oh, my teammates suck. But remember, there's a person on the other end. I hope this also, you know, gets you have more empathy for the people perspective of the people you're playing against. So, or with, let's dive in guys. Here we go. Where I want to start. And would you prefer uh, Gamer Dad or Mike? Oh, Mike's fine. That's fine. That's Mike? Mike, Mike. Cool. So, um, <clears throat> so we got recommended, uh, well, someone sent a clip, right, to the BBC. It was a week or two ago. And, you know. Sorry, I'm still stoked to be on the podcast. I'm stoked to be on the podcast. So thanks for having me on the podcast, man. I really do appreciate it. So. We're glad yeah, to have you, Mike. I'm very, very excited for this episode. The whole week I've been, I've been thinking about what we're going <laughs> to ask you. Um. Yes, we kind of stumbled. I stumbled across you. Did you know of Gamer Dad before that episode? No, I literally, again, someone from my community sent me some clips. Yeah. And they're like, oh, this is really cool. Like, check this guy out. Yeah. And, and then obviously I brought it on the podcast and we talked about it. Yeah. So, um, you know, we got sent these clips and these TikToks at the time and and on that episode. And and uh -oh. as you know, right, the my reaction, I was uh, in shock. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I, was yeah, yeah. I was hysterically laughing. And to give a bit of context, so... Um, you know, I actually, cause I felt bad after seeing your, your reaction, because I, I think that, um, it came, it could easily be interpreted as ageism or, uh, being a bit disrespectful that you're an older gamer. I, I could, I could see how it could come across like that. So I, you know, obviously I wanted to make sure that it wasn't interpreted that way. And I came onto your stream and gave you a bit of a heads up. And I apologize if, 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 if it, you know, offended you in any way. Um, but I also wanted to add some clarification here because um, why why that clip was so jarring to me. So my dad is a, a gamer. He's been a gamer his whole life. And so I grew up in a PC gaming household. Nice. So ever since I was five years old in, in 2000, year 2000, even 1999, I played my first FPS when I was four or five years old, uh, Nerf Arena Blast. So my dad introduced me to games very, very, very early on. And my entire uh, weekends growing up was my dad on PC, my brother on PC, and me on PC. So I've been growing up in a gaming household my entire life. And your enthusiasm and your passion and your uh, your energy and the way you were speaking about the game was so jarring to me because my father is very conservative. <laughs> and he's, a, he's, he's one of those yeah. silent gamers and uh, he's a, you know, a single player gamer type player. He's made a bit of FPS, but to me... Um, it was like, wow, okay. And I it was kind of just a shock to my system in a way. Mm. And so that's kind of to give a bit of context why my reaction might have been so. No, I get, I, I get it. I mean, I'll, don't forget it's my hook. Old guy plays games, right? So, uh, <laughs> and that's great because I like my uh, my daughter called me up uh, last weekend. She's like, you want to play WoW? And we sign up on Discord and we play World of Warcraft and we connect that way too. So it's totally cool. And a lot of people came to your defense saying you're a good guy and stuff. They said Nathan's a bit of a, you know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Damn that Nathan guy. I know, yeah, yeah. So, but it was pretty cool that you came on, and 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 thanks for inviting me on the on the, the podcast to talk about that stuff. So I get it, I get it. It's a bit of a shock. Plus, so good looking, 
it's very difficult, you know, sometimes it's just kind of overwhelming, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so did you, so was your family growing up, you're, you're a father, um, do you have, so is it sons and daughters? What do you, what's the situation? I have, I have one daughter now. So growing up, no, man, we were a single mom, three kids, you know, uh, and one of them was me and I was a little bugger. Um, and then I ended up, I ended up moving out of home by times 14 group homes, all that stuff like that. But, uh, but I, I was really lucky. I was at an inner city school and, uh, the, the, one of the profs, well, a teacher there had gotten computers into the school. So we had a computer lab. So I was programming back in like 78, 79, and we're talking machines, the size of a room kind of stuff. Yeah. And eventually on, on smaller stuff. So I totally got into it and I started programming games there just if then else games. And, but I hung out at the downtown arcade. Right. So I was I was just a little troublemaker, little arcade rat, you know, long hair and going to like, you know, I saw Queen live and ACDC and all these people. And uh, so we would play play those games. And then uh, eventually uh, Pong came out and electronic games. And I was just and we were playing Asteroids. We'd, at, we'd be at like a, you know, a um, corner store in the back room playing Asteroids and that stuff till two in the morning and just little street rats, you know. So and then eventually uh, I joined the reserves and then. I got uh, just actually just before that I got a Commodore Vic twenty. You guys ever seen that? No, no the, that was that's like the first gaming no, console, right? The Commodore. Seen. Well, it's like a little PC that you could do yeah. some gaming on it. It had I can't remember what like, sort of games know, were on that. Oh, like, like, it was like, like it, just choice games. Very yeah. dude. It had a tape drive. It had a tape drive, right? So if you want to get to your program, you had to fast forward. So from there, I, you know, I was just hooked. And then, and then I got a Commodore 64, played on those. And then when I went to university, I got a PC and got those and ended up upgrading computers so I could actually get better video cards to play better video games. And then just never stopped. Right? Wait, were you always a PC gamer, Mike? Did you just always, after the Commodore, like, did you ever do like PlayStation or Xbox? Or well, you I just had like Nintendo and then a Super NES. Okay. And then eventually I got an Xbox, which kind of was really marketed, I think, slightly to older gamers. And uh, then all my buddies, we were all to get together. I mean, we, I, all my friends, like my best friend that I, I still play, like I play uh, online on Xbox with him and another buddy, he and I met in the arcade, right? I used to play Defender. He played Missile Command. And we've been friends for over 40 years, like weddings, the whole nine, you know, Godfathers and the whole nine yards. I still get online and we're playing, what are we playing? State of the K2 right now. We we're playing Fall of 76 before that. And another buddy of mine that I used to do stand up comedy with, uh, I've known him for 30 something years. Oh, yeah, I used to be a stand up comic too for a while. Yeah, there's, 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 another, there's another thing. thing. There's <laughs> another skill at my yeah. guys. So, uh, yeah. And then uh, eventually, I, I don't want to get out of pace with your questions and stuff, but then it just kept going. And then, you know, PC games and LAN parties. And we that's where I got networking because if you wanted to have a PC gaming thing, we then Doom, right? Doom was the Doom was a game changer. So we're all going to each other's houses and bringing our, you know, making a LAN party. You had to learn networking if you want to play, right? And then we're all geeking out and doing that. And uh, we have to play uh, Nintendo 64 when GoldenEye came out. But by that time, I was doing gaming reviews. So things things just got out of hand. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So I've always been, I've just always, you know, well, you guys, you said you've been gaming since you were five. And here you are still gaming, right? So. So so you said there, so you, you, you did gaming journalism. Right. Ga so, yeah. So was, through, how'd you get into that? So I got into the way I get into a lot of things. Apparently I have no fear. So um, I, I bought a game and it was like 60 bucks or 70 bucks back in the day. I, and I call home and, you know, you're talking floppy drives and everything like that. There's no internet. There's no, nobody's saying anything. So you're just rolling the dice. I it sucked, totally sucked. And I can't get my money back. So I went over to the local newspaper and said, look, I will. And I had done some writing and all that stuff like that. I said, look, I will write game reviews for you um, for free if you want. Uh, because I think people need to know, you know, because people are buying these games and stuff. So they said, yeah. So I wrote it and it was really popular. I actually I can't take it off the wall, but I was known as Game Boy back then. So I'm a little older now. Right. And my hair was red. So and uh, so I started writing for that was the Hamilton Spectator. That's where I'm from. And uh, then I started writing for other papers and more papers and some magazines. And the next thing you know, I was kind of syndicated at about 1.2 million readers. And then I was going to like, you know, Comdex and all these things, E3. And I got to tell you a story. So I'm at, uh, I think it was E3, and I'm talking to these British guys. And at that point, I think I'm all that in a bag of chips because I'm a pretty big, right? Like, I'm, you know, pretty well known. And I'm talking to these guys. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're coming out with a game. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what is it? You know, maybe I'll review it, you know? And like, oh, blah, 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 it's this. I'm like, oh, yeah, send me a copy. And, you know, maybe I'll check it out. It was Goldeneye. It was, it was before it came out, right? Which just totally changed games entirely. Wow. 
And yeah, I wish it, it, even I remember I never played GoldenEye, but I I know yeah. that GoldenEye was like one of the big games that changed. Oh yeah, it changed. It was a total game changer, right? A hundred percent changed the the whole. That really brought the FPS home, right? And I remember somewhere I was being interviewed for a TV show, and I think it was Mech Warrior Two came out. I was just talking about this with my students. I teach computer systems, so I can always talk games with those guys. Yeah. Mech Warrior Two came out, and they had like a beautiful intro cutscene, right? You know, with the mechs and stuff. And I was saying, look. This is the cutscene, but you give it 10 years, they're going to look like this. Games will look like this movie. And when that happens, it's over, right? And legit, it is over. I mean, you guys must know the stats on the gaming industry as a whole. Like it dwarfs movies, uh, TV, uh, and music. All of them dwarfs them all worldwide, right? So, and the prize pools for League is just insane and Dota, right? Like it's just, so now it's just exploded. And of course, now it's it's made a big leap and, and we're finally getting good television shows from games. Like it's just it's just integrated. And more and more people are, are like, like I had to go, like I had to go to my rich friend's house to play Atari. That was cool, right? So now, but everybody's grown up with a console. And like the I said, Paris entries dad, like, reduce significantly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like everybody's a gamer dad now, and everybody's a gamer parent. And you know, it's it's a it's sort of integrated into well, you know, it's ubiquitous, right? So which is great. Because what I'm really interested in, so obviously you were into games your entire life. You had a daughter. Yeah. Was your daughter into, did you get your daughter into gaming very young? Or how, uh, yeah, yeah, into? yeah. Actually, when she was really small, I used to play this game, uh, World War II Online, which was a phenomenal game. You had like something like fifteen to 3,000 people fighting in a World War II. It was a massive, massive mod. And uh, she would sit on my lap. And what I did is uh, redid the key bindings. So when I fire a tank or shooting somebody, she could hit the space bar. And she was much, she had much better eyesight than I. She's a guy in the bush and she, da, 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 da. and then uh, eventually we started playing other games. And when she got like eight, nine, 10, we started playing Call of Duty. We had rules and uh, we'd, we'd play online with my friends, but everybody knows not to swear when she's playing. And my friends thought I was hilarious. They're like, your, your daughter is killing me with a machine gun she can't carry in real life. You know what I mean? So, which is great. And then a couple of times she was playing, by the time she hit like middle school, she's playing COD with, COD with her friends. And then one of them brought their older brother into the game because the rule was just play with your friends, right? <laughs> and so so people have very dad, proud dad moments. This is actually one of mine, a gamer dad moment. So the, the kid brings his high, his high school older brother in and he starts just smashing everybody, right? And, uh, you know, he's being a bully and stuff. She goes, oh, okay, fine. Hang on, I'll be right back. She goes, I'm going to go get my dad, right? So she calls, this is, she goes, dad, I need to do me a favor. What's that? I need to kill this kid. Oh, okay. So I get on and I just smoke this kid. He's running and gun and I'm camping. I'm, I'm just blowing him up. I'm just trashing him. And like, he's like, well, I got to go to school. And he like rage quit. And he goes, she goes thanks. <laughs> so yeah, see you later. So yeah. And then uh, we played World of Warcraft together, Hearthstone together. And now she's 23 and still calls me and we play, you know, we'll play uh, World of Warcraft. But like, I don't know if you guys, do you guys play online games besides League with your friends and stuff like that or? Not really anymore. Uh, we're, we're very unique, Mike. We are yeah. completely <laughs> obsessed into You're immersed, League. We yeah. only play League yeah. for about a decade. That's right. <laughs> well, when I'm playing Fallout or whatever, you know, my buddy wife will say, well, what were you guys doing in the games? Because he goes, I don't know what Mike was doing. He's on the other side of the map. It's, it's an extended phone call, right? You know what I mean? So, mm. and we can have a bro chat or whatever. So same thing, my daughter, like, we were playing the other day, but we were doing two different things in the world. But we're just chatting about life. We're using Discord, you know. So, and lots of people. I mean, that's the great thing about gaming, right? Like, I I have a group of students that I still play flex with once in a while, but they they don't play ranked anymore very often. But they they just play flex and they hang out and they have a good time. Like the like you know the fact that we can connect this way is just phenomenal, right? Just phenomenal. So so you ob so obviously Vaping. I will quit. I will quit. So shut up. People always <laughs> give me crap. Good. Is that what your Twitch chat tells you, Mark? Is that what they <laughs> say? <laughs> Oh, you should see you should see TikTok, right? It's so mad that they saw me vaping. Ah, I got it. Yeah, yeah, there'll probably be lots of anti-vapors there. there. There's a probably <laughs> well, a strong no, it's community. So. But anyways, it's okay. So we anyway, um, so <laughs> you you've been you play games your entire life. You had a daughter, introduced gaming to your daughter. Did you ever get other parents around you or your friends be like, well, you know, Mike, why are you introducing your game, your 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 daughter to gaming so young? And and knowing what you know now about games, how do you how do you view gaming as like, a, is it simply a hobby? Do you think people can learn about themselves through games? What's your view of gaming in, through that lens? And oh, I want to add here as well, because obviously, I mean, the stigma for gaming mm. me in the media over the years, you know, it doesn't have oh, yeah. the best rap, yeah. right? So, but it's really interesting because again, you've been on both sides. You're a teacher sort of in the, in the school system. So you get to see kids and their parents, and then you're also a gamer yourself. So really interesting. Yeah. To see what you, so you it's, I, I, well, you know, you may or may not like my answer. It's a double-edged sword, right? 
So watching my daughter play games uh, is different than me because I got a male lizard brain. You know what I mean? Like I have to finish whatever it is and it never stops. I'll keep playing. You know what I mean? Right. She can play and walk away anytime. She was like, right. she's, okay, I got to go. I got to go. Like literally there were times like, can you finish your homework? We got to level up so we can do this raid in World of Warcraft. We have whatever. So she's really good like that. On the teaching side of it, I have like a kid that's like, I don't know, master or grand something in Dota 2, but he's keeping a good GPA. I lose kids every year to league because they just, you know, they're away from home and then, the, you know, there's nobody to tell them not to play. So, you know, it's a balance. And I just remember like back in the day when I was playing a lot of COD, I actually cared about my, you know, kill death ratio, my KDR, right? You know what I mean? For a while I cared about it. And one day I realized it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Because I was talking to a guy and he's like, oh, I got to stay up because I want number one KDR in the world. It doesn't matter, right? So after that, I didn't care. I started running around with an FN or, or you know, uh, with a flamethrower and just trying to find whoever had the best KDR and light them on fire. They get very angry. It's be great, right? Trolling. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if you've ever been in a Call of Duty lobby. It makes League look like, a, you know, like a, a choir meeting, right? So, um, so I... <sighs> I never got flack for it. What I, what what stunned me, and because I'm older, right? So and we had kids older. My we were in our 30s when we had my daughter. Um, so there, so the parents that she's hanging out are younger. A lot of them weren't gamers, right? And I talk to these people who aren't gamers, and it's almost like talking to aliens sometimes. But people more interesting. People would talk to my wife, right? And she was not a gamer, right? Well, well, we play Mario Kart together. The whole family would play Mario Kart. My my wife was really good at that game. My daughter just smoked a bunch of guys that thought they were good at it. She's like, do you even lift, bro? You know what I mean? And then so um, they would say, well, what, what about your husband gaming? She goes, well, there are far worse hobbies he could have. And I know where he is. So he can do whatever. And she was very patient. I talked about games. She goes, mm -hmm, uh -huh. I go, you're not listening at all. She goes, no, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. nice. You know, so so for me, it was good connection time. But I know other people that are like my my best friend uh, that I play video games with. I gave him a, a game one time. It was called Earthbound. It was for Super NES. Great game, very positive game. You don't kill people, you fix them and stuff. He played that through three or four times with his kids. You know what I mean? So, and he's got a picture of him sitting there with his son and his daughter. They all got controllers and they all talked about the game and they all played together. And he had that connection. Um, I, I don't know if I told you about our esports arena at the school. Yep, you mentioned that to me, send some photos. I'll put some photos up right, here okay. with, on okay. the podcast. So I remember talking to a guy. It was one of our one of one of the guys in uh, I forget what he but anyway, some one of the guys I had to talk to when we're building the arena, using logistics or whatever, trying to explain YouTube and gaming, and it's he just didn't get it, right? He hundred percent didn't get it. I'm sure you've had that, right? Like I don't know. And he said, Well, my son plays a game. And I said, Oh, what game? Oh, I don't know. On what console? I don't know. And and I and I'm you know, I'm trying to be Nice, because this is administration. And I finally stopped. I said, dude, you should know, right? You should know what your kid's playing, and mm -hmm. you should take an interest in it, right? You know, I know I get – I had I, there was groups, and I've ended up talking to people. Like, I, there was this group of mothers that that helped their kids game because, you know, because now it's more popular and stuff like that. They learn all about that game, and they support it. My daughter learned, wanted to learn how to play soccer. I learned everything I could about soccer. I played footy before, not soccer. Apparently, you're not supposed to tackle people in soccer. You know? But anyway, so – uh, so, you know, I, I, you know, if your kid suddenly decided they were very interested in astrophysics or dinosaurs, you learn everything about it, right? So I think games are a great way to bring people together. It's neutral territory. You know what I mean? It's the size of the controller. My daughter would smoke me sometimes. It was hilarious. She's the cool kid now because when, you know, her last boyfriend, they play COD together. And, you know, so I don't, I don't know how to answer that. It's kind of weird because like it's for my age group, I'm an outlier, right? But now it's more and more and more common. So it's not... Mm. Not as big of a deal. I think, though, that everything is about balance, right? You know what yeah. I mean. So yeah, you know, so if you're if you're grinding for seven seven hours a night, but you're not doing your homework, you're not going to the gym, you're not doing playing sports, you know, then the, you know it could I mean? be anything else. You could substitute that for Netflix, for TV. Oh, I use that argument all the time. I go, I got five thousand hours in Civ Five. They go, that's a lot of hours. How many hours do you have in television? Yeah. How many hours are you watching Netflix tonight? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, right. and if right. anything, it, it's uh, gaming is actually stimulating your brain and actually getting you. Well, to there's lots of evidence to that. I was supposed to be doing some research a couple of years ago, but then I got sidetracked with family health issues uh, into how it actually affects your brain. There's a really good TED talk uh, about kids' brains on video games and how it changes changes a lot of things. And if people play first person shooters like seniors and stuff, 
their reaction time goes up, their their tracking goes up. Like I can't remember the stat, but like the average person is four to six. They track four to six objects. Uh, somebody uh, who plays FPS games is like seven to eight. Pros are twelve to fifteen. You know, like Shroud is just you know probably thirty. You know, so yeah. I mean, there's lots of benefits, but again, it's like anything, right? If you if you're gonna do it to to excess, if there's a reason I don't drink. Uh, you know what I mean? Is 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 a, a, that's a tough thing. And I think the only problem, legit, is I think it's it's hard on uh, especially younger males. I think because we're very object completion, and when you're playing games that you know, I don't know if you saw my TikTok. Well, you didn't see all my TikToks, but I made a TikTok. You can't win League of Legends. You can't win that game. It's not. That's it not. Never what it ends. No, it never ends, right? So it's the pellet, right? And it's the never thing. So it depends on why you're playing it and what your goal is and stuff, right? So and having a healthy relationship with the game, which leads into a beautiful segue here. League. Yes, Mike. When did you start playing League? And 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 what I'm really interested. in, is why do you play league? What does league do for you that other games don't? Okay, that's a three part. That's a three part. It's kind of a multifaceted question, to be honest it with you. Right? <laughs> so I stopped playing games like uh, PUBG and Battle Royale because I couldn't walk away from it. Right. So like I, I bought open back headsets. If I got to go kill a spider, if I got to, you know, if there's the dog's doing something, I got to go do a dad thing. I got to go. And it was funny too because I'd be playing like PUBG or Battle Royale. My wife would call. <clears throat> sorry, and she's like. Dinner's ready. I'm like, ah, final 10. And she goes, I don't care about final 10. Dinner's, you know what I mean? So, 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 so I stopped playing those games. So I stopped playing stuff I couldn't walk away from. And, and I know that grindy games, you know, I'm going to get there. Ranked games, I think are the worst because it's an arbitrary thing that gets, sucks you in. Right. So, but then I'm, I don't, I don't know why season nine, I play for off and on a couple of times, season 10 off and on. I was just curious about the game and stuff. I think I tried Dota once, but Somebody started screaming at me because I didn't buy a potion at three minutes and 33 seconds. I'm like, I'm done with this game. I don't, I don't need this stuff, kid. You know? And then, so I pitched esports to my school, right? And I specifically, I pitched that we should get an esports arena. This is like four years ago. And they said yes, right? So we start building this like 50 seat arena, like 50 PC arena broadcast, the whole nine yards. They want me to make a business, uh, esports business uh, program, right? You guys are, I know you guys coach, but there's a business behind all of this. There's mechanics behind running a team. There's a business behind products, right? Not just I won Fortnite. You know what I mean? So I'm like, well, if I'm going to be talking about all that, I guess I should play league because it's the most impactful, uh, e -sport out there. You know what I mean? So I start playing on stream and I'm like, okay, rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. Okay. There's that. I don't know what's going on. Whatever. I played Garen. I sucked at that. I played Trindamir, but I played him wrong. I was like engaging with my alt. I didn't know what's going on. One of my uh, Daruvik, one of my mods, he goes, you should try Urgot. I'm like, well, what's an Urgot? And he goes, he has shotguns. I go, oh, I'm in. Okay, right. Okay, shotguns. That sounds good. So then I started uh, playing off and on. I don't know if I really streamed it very much. I started playing it off and on. And uh, I had no idea what was going on, you know. And I think I got bronze something the first time I played. The season reset. I got pushed down to iron. Dude, getting out of iron is so hard, man. Especially when you don't know anything, it's worse. Everybody sucks. It's not team deficits. Everybody sucks, right? And then, um, yeah, and then I just kept with it. And then uh, my wife was sick, and I'm, I'm pretty good at daydreaming, you know, and I wasn't streaming or any kind of stuff because my primary thing was taking care of her. And what I really liked about League, because I'm kind of ADD in case you don't notice, right, was for 30 minutes, I can't think about anything else. Right. Because it's a split second game. Right. You look away, it, you're dead. Right. So for 30 minutes, I got to focus on that. And then I started watching YouTube videos and I try to get better. And I think the first season I got bronze one then I got pushed all the way back, spent half a season. And then, you know, that that season, a lot of people give me a hard time because I, I, I got like two million points on Ergot. And they're like, well, how come you're not platinum double plus? Well, I play at the end of the night when my wife was, you know, she's going to bed or. Uh, you know, I get a break or, you know, and then I play when I'm sad or I play with, you know, I needed that break. Right. So rank didn't really matter. It was just it was a great distraction. Right. And then I decided, though, if I'm going to play, I'm just going to play one champ. I like Durgat. And this is the realization I came to. And I get a lot of comments and TikTok. Like, why don't you play this champ? Why don't you play? I don't have that much time to play. And I said, look, it's not about the champ. It's about the game. I'm not good at the game. My champ is irrelevant. I need to learn the game. You know what I'm saying? And then I need to learn all the matchups for this guy because every time you change champs, the matchup's different, right? So I got to eliminate the number of – I got very happy when I actually started looking at the map. 
You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, something's going on over there. Oh, not, not, you know, I'm just looking at this guy that's, what's this guy do, you know? And then it kind of went from there. And then uh, I started making, I, I started posting some old gaming clips from my Twitch. And then I thought, what the hell? I posted some league clips and here we are. And it just kind of people like, what? It's, it's kind of kind of react the same way you did. What? You know, so <laughs> yeah. And then uh, now, you know, I'm kind of, you know, I'm trying to push and get better at the game and we'll see what happens. Huh? What's interesting is that Mike here, he, you intuited exactly the right thing to do, which was remove the variables, stick to one champion, learn all of your matchups. Don't worry about learning all these, playing all the meta champions. Stick to one that you enjoy. You just enjoy Ergot. And that way you can actually now think about the map holistically. You can actually learn the game because me and Nathan talk about this all the time. In League, you're only learning one of two things. You're learning the game or you're developing champion mastery. Right. And you only can learn the game once you've got champion mastery because your mental stack is so overwhelmed when you're playing a new champion. You're like, well, yep. what do I do? What are my abilities? You're thinking do? about how to hit your abilities rather than what's going on with the wave or where's everyone here? Where's or everyone? Gonna get what's happening around the map, right? And right. so yeah, you yeah, intuited yeah. that naturally, which is very impressive. And not many people do intuit that. A lot of people overcomplicate the game by swapping their champion every, every week. And then they never actually learn the game because they're so busy learning champions that they just go backwards. So you actually did make the right choice there. So, well, yeah, but that's like changing positions in a sport every week or something. It's, it's, yes, exactly. Right? The moves are different. The plans are different. And the then you know, I started to get different. happy about little things when my CS improved, right? Or I actually saw enough to go on to get rotated, or I wasn't getting ganked, or I learned that you could poke the thing, the rift in the back, and it blows up faster. Mm. I didn't know that. You know what I mean? There's all these, there's all these little things that now I'm starting to do kind of intuitively. Um, and I'm not thinking about my champ. I try and learn new champs, but again, I tell I, now I don't. What's your opinion on this? People like play the play this champ, and I'm like, that's going to take me at least a hundred games till I'm competent at that mm. champ. A hundred at least. You know what I mean? Uh, do I have that amount of time? I don't know. Right. Um, so you know, generally I'll play that. I've tried. I tried. By the way, I tried to play Rumble. I liked Rumble because fire, uh, but I couldn't carry with them. So you know, so I stopped playing them for a while. I'm not that good. Um, people, people will be saying to you, Mark, I'll oh, play this champion, play this champion, for probably a couple of reasons. Like, let's say the first one is it'll be cool to see Gamer Dad Mark play that champion on stream because I play that champion. But the biggest one is that there is a, we, we talked about this, a, we talked about this a lot about, it's always about like the meta or some like little trick or some way you can climb extra ELO or a gimmick. Yeah, I don't but like what, meta. I don't like meta. Yeah. That's great. Again, but it's really interesting because you again you're picking that up intuitively here as yeah. well. Again, Mike. Yeah. Otherwise, because the flavor of the everyone's week, looking right? for a. Everyone thinks that they are could maybe get that extra like bit of elo with that, but at the end of the day, they're actually not getting better at the game because at the end of the day, that champion's going to get nerfed, and then right. where are you at? You know. So you know what I like is when I'm playing against somebody, and so let's say Mord is strong, right? So, yeah. anyways, the uh, the whole meta thing. A, I'm very stubborn, right? I used to play World of Warcraft. And uh, the, the meta was that you run with two big two-handers. You get this special ability, you get two big two-handers. and Dual wield. So, yeah, dual wield, right. And you DPS. Well, I, I liked, I liked one-handers, and I'm like, I wrote up a spreadsheet, but the, two the big ones would always win, right? Where, but I'm like, well, wait a minute. Those swing this fast. These ones swing this fast. I should get an extra swing in every four swings. You know what I mean? I should get 4v5. And for that, I'll end up getting more points. But but literally, World of Warcraft was against actually the math. So I spent a lot of time getting every trinket I could to max that. I would go into a dungeon to DPS, and the meta is the other way. They go, oh, we're all going to die because the DPS is doing one-handers. And I'm like, it'll be fine. In World of Warcraft, you could get a little damage counter. By the time they're halfway through the raid, I'm top DPS. And they're like, how are you doing that? I'm going, math, bro. It's math. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of math in this game, right? Uh, I just did a coaching with um, Max Waldo. I don't know if you guys know who he is. Great guy. And he was all about the math, right? So uh, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, meta. So anyways, but when you're playing this, if people are doing the flavor of the week or the meta of the week, that doesn't mean you're good, right? You know what I mean? Two, when you start going up against somebody, like uh, Mordekaiser is really strong right now, right? But I can tell when I'm playing somebody that's been playing Mord for a while or somebody who's just playing meta, and I'm going to kill him, right? Because he doesn't right know. Away. You can tell in the first few minutes. Oh, yeah. And I, I played Mordekaiser. Guess what? I'm getting killed. I can't throw things back or I can't do all the little tricks. That you like with Urgot, I can do all of his little tricks, all of them, right? You know, I flash E incessantly. But mm. so, by the way, people get really mad when I flash E. And my best comment I saw on TikTok is, "You're all mad like you paid for his flash. Like, 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 leave him alone." You know, like, well, that's <laughs> not going to work in plat. I'm not in plat, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, 
Actually, so, we're talking. Uh, we're talking. Go ahead. I was just going to ask now, like obviously now that you've played the game for quite a while and you've been, you know, you've been attempting to climb with Ergot. Um, what are what are things you wish you knew about League? Like, what are things you wish people told you about the game of League of Legends before you took it seriously and actually started to get better? It, well, it's a grindy game and it's a rank game, so you're, you're making a commitment, right? Which is fine. I think. So, so there's a lot of gatekeeping by ego in League, in my opinion, right? If you get into a lobby and people's right, one of the worst things I hear, you know, somebody say, "Well, how do I get better at League?" And they're like, "Get better," you know, not helpful. Right. From a coaching perspective, like I wouldn't throw you in the middle of a football game and go, well, good luck. You know, just get better. <laughs> you know, so I think. I think so I can watch Faker play. I cannot play like Faker. I think one of the reasons that my TikToks and stuff do well is because I am, you know, bronze, silver scrape, as they call them, whatever. Right. I am. I am everybody's journey. Right. Everybody had to get through this journey. Um, and there is a myriad of things I don't know. I think I think what I would have liked is a, a simpler breakdown of the game. You know what I mean? So you're and, talking about this tutorial when no, not in league. That tutorial is never gonna cut it. I mean, just just yeah. from YouTube, just for people start coaching at a higher level very quickly. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. that's what that's what their perception of the game There's is. There's a lot of assumed knowledge, isn't there? A hundred percent. And people will I, I'll see comments like everybody should know that. Well, bro, everybody doesn't. You 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 maybe you've been no life in the game for 10 years. I don't know. Right? They've played you know thousands I mean? of hours and it's assuming automatically that everyone knows that. Because the interesting thing here, Mark, is that League is uh one of the first games that has had such a massive player base for such an extended period of time. Right. So that's why all <laughs> this knowledge and stuff's building up because think about um, you know, your gaming journal because this is a great thing about it is you've grown through the entire gaming industry, right? Right. Games come and go in months, right? You switch to the next oh, game. Yeah. New game came out. New game came out. There's only a handful of games, you know, like... Uh, Counter-Strike, Counter Strike, World of Warcraft. I, Counter -Strike. Original, I used to play the original Counter-Strike and just rip with that, man. So, yeah, me but, too. But I the Counter -Strike, that's, a, that's not a knowledge game. That's just like an aim and click. So that's that's out of the window. And anyone right? can that disagree with you. I disagree with you. You got to know your maps. You got to know your rotations. You got to know the block points. You got to know the choke yeah, points. But it's going to be much quicker to learn than the League compared to League, right? I don't want to get the Counter Strike community upset. So, uh, <laughs> okay. oh, I, 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 well, let's have this conversation yeah, because I'm a yeah. Counter Strike player. I was a very good Counter Strike player. Yeah, and just just raw variables. League has an immense amount of baseline knowledge that you need to understand. All the champions, the hundred oh, yeah. and something champions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the items, and then all the interactions between all the champions, the spikes of all the champions, when they're strong, when they're weak, how their abilities interact in Counter Strike. This guy has an AK, I have an M4, he has an AWP, I have a Deagle. It's the, the raw variables, are there's limited. just less of them. Yeah, yeah. Right? No, and 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 the, the title of your uh, podcast says it all, because those variables change constantly. Yes. Right? This week they it's do. Eclipse, next week it's the RAV, that, that you know, like... And yeah. they're updating the game every few weeks. And that's that's the great thing about the game. They change it all the time, and, and that's that's, right. that's why we're all hooked, and that's why everybody's like, what's going on now, right? But again... And that's why there's all that assumed knowledge again. And a like, lot of assumed knowledge, yeah. And, and right. League, again, is it's 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 a phenomenon. We, we actually call League as a phenomenon because it's, again, the first game that's had such an extended life with this amount of play base. So the yeah. barrier to entry of new players sort of come in, it's actually just increasing, increasing and becoming hard. And, and again, coming from a player like you, it's actually going to be pretty intimidating, like first coming in and you're yeah. in lobbies, uh, you know, people saying, oh, you know, you suck, you know, you should know this, oh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, terrible yeah. and stuff. So, you know, the most important thing I learned, and it's funny too, because like I was playing an iron and I do something stupid and somebody says iron players. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, you're an iron with me too, man. You don't got, you, what, you <laughs> <laughs> okay. Those players are, now we're, now we're in delusion sort of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's everyone thinks they're better than they are. Yeah, everyone thinks they're better than they are, yeah. But so, so I've played games legit and this is a very important thing. It's, it's a, and you know, it's a lot, it's like any sport or anything. There's a big mental component to it, right? So the first thing I learned, by the way, I, when I learn champs, you know how I learn new champs? I play them on stream because somebody there will have played that and no, like I'll, I'll learn it faster because I want to stand on the shoulders of giants, right? But like I've played games where, you know, things are not going well. I got a bad matchup. I've never had the matchup before, troll matchup, who knows? And somebody's like, stop inting and, you know, the standard kind of stuff and blah, blah, blah. And they're not helping and it's making you nervous. And if you're taking it personally, you fall apart and dead game. Other games I've played, same scenario. And somebody's, hey, man, try this against him. Do this. Don't worry. We got you. Very positive. End up winning the game, right? 
So when people are being toxic, what I find very funny about that is they are actually, by that behavior, decreasing their chance of winning. That's right. You're, you're, there's a fire. You're just throwing gas on it. You know what I mean? And uh, I got to tell you a story. I was, I was playing and things were going okay. And uh, th- I just want to talk about the toxicity and that's just gamers. They're, you know, they can, you know, and uh, so well, anyways, you got to so- have, you got to put it yourself in their shoes as well, right? It's the, the power of being anonymous on the internet, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like if the, I could punch them in the yeah, head, the, the conversation goes a different way. Sure. But, <laughs> but, but I, but I think league yeah. though specifically is very frustrating because mm-hmm. of the way it's structured, right? It's a snowball centric game. So yep. a mistake you make at level one is going to impact you for the entire game. Oh, it's yeah, also, yeah. Um, it, it, there are so many variables happening around you out of your control because there's four other people on your team and there's 10 people yeah, in the game. It sucks so when you're doing your job. So yeah, it sucks when you're doing your job though, but somebody fed their lane, they come and kill you. And, yep, and that's you know, as well. And then also um, you can be doing well and you get a bounty and you make one mistake and then boom, you can, yeah, you, yeah, can, yeah. you can change the game. So there are many, and also the anonymity on the internet and all that. Yeah, so, yeah. And there's obviously competitive, everyone's a, you know competitive and they're playing ranked. So there's all this combined together, which makes a bit of a shit, oh, yeah. shit show. Plus, and plus a, big, the a big part, Mike, of our podcast and our message is, you know, people say like, oh, League's toxic and all sort of stuff, but we like to understand why that's the case. Mm-hmm. And it actually makes a lot of sense. And and that's helps people in their ranked journeys and have a healthier relationship in the game. Because when someone yeah. is, uh, you know, being upset or, or AFK in a game, you know, it, it sucks that they're doing it, but, it actually can, you know, it makes sense. And then you shouldn't get really frustrated because like, okay, I understand why that person would do that. So here's the thing too. You don't know what somebody else is going through, right? You know what I mean? Exactly right. I I was playing that being a primary caregiver for some, for, for somebody I love intensely. I I just want to break from reality. I don't need you yelling at me. You know what I mean? Or that maybe I'm not playing that well. So, but I understand, right? It's a competitive game. You want to win, right? I just want to tell you the story though. So I'm playing and I have now later, I learned to not do this. I'll tell you the most important thing I learned about league. Anyways, we're playing, and the mid is not doing that well. And, of course, when the mid's losing his lane, it's the jungler's fault, right? So so he starts flaming people. And he's like, well, you kids, and you kids this, and you kids that. And I'm like, bro, I bet you I'm older than you. He goes, I'm 30. I go, I'm 58. Crickets, right? And then everybody else is like, <laughs> LOL, 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 right? And then and then that guy just shut up. He just shut up. And then we actually won the game because he just, he, just, he just sat down. It was over, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so I find I, you know, and you just don't know, like somebody's playing the only two games they're going to get to play for the day. They've had a rough day at the office, or maybe they got home from high school and dad's being a dick. You, you, like nobody, nobody knows what's going on with anybody else in the internet. It's only, it's only front side facing. Right. But there's a, the, the Marines have a great saying, by the way, I, I, I like this very much is this welcome to the suck. It means everything is going to suck. Just get used to it and move forward. Right. Hmm. somebody's in thing our favorite saying here uh mike is embrace the suck uh, see journey. that's when you're really good then you're like yeah, yeah. this sucks this is awesome yeah so yeah. i think the tiktok that you got you watched two tiktoks the very first one though i was talking about somebody went afk and i had to play 4v5 probably gonna lose the game but i want to play this 4v5 because i have to play better right and if i that pull was it off great, by the way that's right? a good message that's, that's a yeah, really awesome, powerful yeah. message well now now you're gonna have to play tight now you can't make mistakes like even you know you can't give up a little bit and depend on somebody else and you're gonna have to win team fights that you're already losing so you gotta win by macro you gotta win another way right so and 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 i'm like okay all right you know what i mean like my 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 ego and my life and my rank and my esports career isn't hanging on any of this and uh so let's see what happens let's see if i can make it happen and then and then you maybe the next game when it's you know, you get a reasonable team and you just tweaked up and played against adversity. Now you're going to crush it. Right. And what you said there about the, the Marines saying, um, what was it again? Uh, Oh, welcome to the suck. Welcome Welcome to the suck. suck. Right. That, that in a way is a very simple way of kind of, we talk about on the BBC, um, the solo queue contract, which is essentially we write down all of the the shit that you're going to face. You're right. going to get trolls. You're not going to get your role. Your champion's going to get banned. Someone's going to rage at you. Yep. And when you come into the game expecting the worst, anything that is above that, anything that is remotely better than that, great. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that gladly. And, and, and that just having managed expectations in league will make you a very strong, headstrong player. Because nothing can can bother you. It's like if I if I expect my mid laner to go zero five every game as a top laner, and my jungle to never gank my lane, and and I get camped by the enemy jungler, if that's my expectation, what what else could possibly? Everything happen? else is a bonus. Everything it's else is a expectation bonus. for life, though, right? 
because, you know, it's nice to have a great day, but something always goes wrong. There's always going to be something. There's always flat tires. Thing. You know, life happens constantly, good and bad and ugly. And, and that doesn't mean that you don't feel about it or have an emotional context to it. But like, you know, I, I can't remember something, something happened with the car or whatever like that. And somebody said, well, aren't you going to get mad? I go, is that going to fix the car? So no, <laughs> right. So, you know, that's not going to fix your lane either. Getting up. Very applicable to league. It's yeah. like the, the, I watched the Godfather again uh, the other day. And there's a scene with the Godfather and the, the actor who lost his job. He was really wanting this job. And he came to the Godfather crying and the Godfather's like, what are you doing? What is this crying? What is this babbling going to do? This, how is this going to help you get the help get the role? Yeah, it's you not going to start this stuff up. Yeah. yeah, it's like, what is this going to do? You can either sit here complaining and have a cry about it, or you oh, can... Oh, yeah, the, the singer, the singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. and then I'm like, I, I just thought about that situation, and it's so it's so simple, but it's such a good... It's exactly the same message. It's such a... Well, well I, I play, and then somebody does something, and they kill me, and I'm like, wow, that was... Nice job. That was good. That was a good kill right that is yeah. that is no one does that by the way mike you know and and it's such a powerful thing very 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 rarely people compliment the other person if someone get if someone outplays you in the league community what from what i've seen and in, in, in our clients it's typically smart champions the OB. champions broken smurf, or their jungler yeah. helped them yeah. or no, no, there's no. some bullshit if you just simply say oh yeah they actually played that pretty that well, well played to them you feel fine it's just like whatever here's you know? my favorite thing i do and, and don't forget like i said i used to care when i played cod and stuff i don't as much now right but like and on my streams if you ever watch money streams like last the other night it happened i got ganked and i went that's my fault right so i didn't i didn't check the i didn't check i didn't ward i didn't you know i pushed i didn't i didn't look at the clock so it's not even a good gank i just i just gave it to him so that's my fault right yeah no problem right yep. so and then you got to accept that right so and I, I miss my ease. I do those things. And, then, eh, you know, so sometimes, you know, that's crazy. And sometimes you pull it off all right. But you got to kind of accept responsibility. And you have to accept that it's a dumpster fire. It's league, man. And everyone is going to make mistakes. Everyone is going to make mistakes. So I want to bring up something very interesting here. So um, have you heard of the Street Fighter player Daigo Umahara? No. So this guy, he's known in the West as the Beast. He's age 41. He's the most successful player in major tournaments of Street Fighter um, in the Guinness World Records and is a six-time Evo Championship Series winner. He wrote a book called uh, The Will to Keep Winning. And I'm going to read an excerpt from this book um, that I think you might resonate with and we can kind of kind of flow on from this. He says, sure. whenever a new game comes out, the younger players are generally better at first. They pick it up easier. Younger people tend to pick up things faster because unlike veterans, they have an unassuming acceptance of new, new things. It's all about how open you are to new games. Those who enjoy a game for what it is are by far the strongest immediately after a new release. Enjoying the game, not winning at them, enjoying them comes naturally when we are young and it gets harder with age and experience. Don't reject new things, accept the lessons as they present themselves at face value. It's easy to forget this as we gain more experience and, at and attain a certain position with age. The older you get, experiences shape your thoughts. You get caught up with the past and, filled and, and fixed in your ways, unable to shake preconceptions. What jumps well, out to you? I don't do that. So Yeah, the, you're the complete opposite, Mike. Because yeah. the thing about you, Mike, is that you know, given your age, a lot of people have really rigid ways of thinking. Like, let's say it's like, oh, games are oh, for yeah. kids, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, they, they say, I, yeah, they'll say that. And I, I, I got a really good TikTok that well about that. And I'll just tell you what I said was that uh, playing games, uh, what is it? Uh, you, oh, you don't stop playing games because you get old. You get old because you stop playing games, right? So, and there's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a, and I can't remember who actually originally so, said it, but it was in a movie. It was, you know, that tag movie quoted that. Uh, and there's a big difference between being childish and childlike, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, you know, I got a job and a credit card and everything, so I can spend my money on whatever I want. And and, and I and I, I have friends that are like, oh, the mu good music stopped in like 1970, whatever, right? You know what I mean? Meanwhile, I'm listening to Bollywood dubstep, and and I used to listen to a lot of hardcore rap and some weird stuff. And but so so if you got an open mind, because the world the, look, the only thing that stays the same same is everything changes, right? Okay, we're not living in the world that I used to live in. It's not even remotely close to that world anymore, right? Especially pre-internet and all that stuff. And and I teach in IT, so I talk about this all the time. I don't even know what world it's going to be in 10, 20 years. But a lot of things are the same. People are the same. Uh, situations are the same. 
And I think wonder is always available and, and, and being open-minded and, and experiencing new things is great. You know, there's some games I won't play anymore. Cause I'm like, nah, yeah, I know what that is. Or I'll play a game to the end and it's a set piece fight that I got to learn. I'm like, it's a, I, I don't need the, the satisfaction of winning that. I'm good. I, I got my entertainment out of it. Um, so I don't know if I 100% agree with them on that um, because uh, – so I get a lot of older gamers showing up in my chat, right? And they thought, oh, I thought I was old. I'm 30. I'm 40. You know, I'm, I'm 28 and I'm washed or whatever, right? You know what I mean? So, you know, am I going to be uh, – am I going to be super platinum double plus? No, no, no. But, you know, if I can ever get up to high silver gold, I think I win. By the way, I think – by the way, when I said you can't win in a league, I think if you hit gold, I think you kind of win. You're, you're in a good position, and after that, you're going to really have to push and make a choice to get to that rank for a reason. You know what I mean? Or now you can sort of you know hang out and have a good time. So I, I don't – yeah. But kids are naturally more open-minded. They'll pick stuff up. By the way, still still, if I need phone support, I talk to my daughter because I, I just hate all the apps. They drive me crazy. So I don't know. Do, do you believe that, though? Well, my, I think the, the thing is, is that you are naturally open-minded. I think that's your personality. Your personality is that you seem to – you don't dwell in the past. That seems to be your one of your personality traits is that you move on quickly. It's like you did this, you did this, you did this. I could you could live on your past accolades. Of, you know, you're in the army, you've done this, you've done this, but you seem to adapt. You're doing TikTok, you're doing streaming on Twitch, you're you're playing a very difficult game that despite other people, you know, saying shit about that. And I think <laughs> that in a way, he, you're actually agreeing with what I think he actually this is a testament to to you guys probably have the similar mindset what and what Diego actually does he says for him to stay in touch with uh new games and um and stay in touch with the younger generation he goes to the arcade still oh there you go and yeah, plays yeah. with the young kids um in the street fighter and stuff because he wants to verse the younger players because they're the ones that are, are genuinely playing the game to have fun and a more free flow and are able to achieve higher levels of of well, competition so, so Let's talk about that though. So I think one of the things people like about me playing league is I'm I'm actually having fun. Apparently that's illegal in league, right? right. You know it I mean? is. Yes, it yeah. is illegal, Mike. Yeah. You're yeah. right. Yes, right. And they're that's, like, well, it's that's nice actually to... a big part of our job at Broken by Concept yeah. is showing people how fun how the to game have fun can be with league. League is a fun it's game. Really fun. <laughs> it can yes. no, it can be a fun game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it can. But that's like, um, I, and I use this analogy all the time, like. League is easy to learn, hard to master. Golf is easy to learn, hard to master. Poker is easy to learn, hard to master, right? And then, like, you know, when I used to play golf for a while before I blew my shoulder up, um, you know, uh, I remember I, I got good at it really fast, right? Like, I was under 100 pretty fast, and I was pushing 70, like, like my first year or second year playing golf, and I was complaining. And somebody says, what are you talking about? There's guys that have played this for, like, 30 years, and they haven't broken 100, dude. You know what I mean? And then, but you're just looking for that, that perfect shot. That one, you know, like when you finish a game where you did mostly everything right, everything clicked, you had a good team, that's worth all the other crap that you had to go through to get that moment. You know what I mean? It's pretty awesome. You know, I so, agree. I, I always, you always have to think about those games where everything, you just feel like you're in flow state and every, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yep, I predicted that. Boom. Yep. I saw that coming. I saw that coming. And that, that moment where it all clicks together, where you've got that champ mastery, you foresaw what that guy was going to do it. And you're there at the right time and execute that fight perfectly. That, <laughs> that feels amazing. We actually, we had this conversation a while ago. we we'll, we we'll, we went to the gym and we're walking home one day and, and we said, league is the only, it's the only time, it's the only thing in our life where you can just enter the flow state for 30, 30, 35 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and like you said earlier, nothing else in the world matters. You're in, you're fully immersed in this game. It actually reminds me of a, I was watching this interview with Elijah Wood, the actor, okay. yeah, and he's yeah, saying okay. how video, he's a big video gamer as well. And he's saying that something he, he feels why he loves video games so much, even, even uh, comparatively to film is that it's immersive. You are, especially nowadays with the improved graphics and everything, you are now, when you watch a movie, you're kind of on the outside. You're observing what's happening. But when you're gaming, you're a part of it. You are the one dictating yeah, yeah, yeah. what's happening. So it's a fully immersive experience. I'd say, and then, then the, you add the competitive layer on top of it, and then, then it gets to the next level again. Yeah. And, sure. and, and it's just, and, and, and I think the conversation, we, we came to the conclusion that we're just so grateful to have be in a time, a day and age where we can go oh, yeah. in our room, sit on your chair, lo boot up league, you're in a game within five minutes, boom, and you're immersed. And you're, you're, yeah. you're competing against nine other people that are wanting to beat you. 
that like that like we live in a day like how amazing is that you oh know? it's pretty cool actually i got a vr headset that's even crazier right so eventually <laughs> i'm gonna have a vr classroom it'll be awesome yeah no it's awesome and and it's funny because uh my, my again my friend he doesn't like watching tv he doesn't like doing any of that stuff and his wife well why are you playing games he goes because because uh, watching tv for me is passive uh i can play whatever game it is insert this game and i am i'm you know, I'm in the game and I'm chilling and I'm an active participant in the outcome yeah. of that that story one way or the other. So, you know, and some really good like I played uh, last winter. I played Halo. It was a great it was a great story. It's a great story. Great game. I got to shoot a lot of stuff. I like shooting stuff. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, 100 percent. Sure. At the same time, like it's all like all things, including Netflix and video games and stuff. There's a there's a difference between getting immersed and having a break and then getting a flow state and having a good time. Or you know, getting sucked in and disappearing, right? Addicted, addicted, addicted. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's a hundred percent part of it too. Like that can happen yeah. and does happen, you know. And then, like I said, double edged sword, double edged sword, right? So now you coach so, mid, you coach jungle. Is that the way? It works? Yeah, I'm jungle that's right. only. Jungle yeah. and mid. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna help me so with my ergo jungle. Ergo jungle isn't actually something I've coached that much, to be honest, but, <laughs> but you I can, can teach you all the fundamentals, Mike. Okay, yeah, because I know jungle clear. Like, I, I got I got my clear not yeah. not too bad, but it's about yeah. halfway through actually, the game. I'm not sure where to go. Ergo used to actually be a jungler. There was a time of like three, four months. I think it was season nine where he actually was a jungler, but then they put him back into top lane. Mm. But yeah, I mean, you know, obviously you, you still can. teach can. him the jungle fundamentals for sure. Yeah, that's right. See, fundamentals so my, are everything, right? So Yes, the they never change. Yeah. Uh, Mike, I wanted to go sort of backtrack a bit. Uh, you said that you never played, like you played a bit of Dota, but let's say you really didn't play a MOBA before. I was the same as well when I first got into League. Right. What were your first impressions of League? And again, I, I mean, obviously we've talked about, you know, obviously you're, a, you know, you said that you have a bit ADD and you're op more open-minded, let's say other people your age. League is, I would say, the perfect game of like the maximum intimidation. Like, oh, that's the kids' game. I even said that about League when I first saw it. Like, I saw it like in the ad thing because I, I actually was a World of Warcraft player and like Guild Wars and stuff like that. And then I saw League and then I was like, oh, you know, it's like, you know, mad magicians shooting lasers at each other. And like, I was like, you know, even me as like a 19, I was like, oh, that's for like the kids. What were your first impressions of the game? Oh, I didn't think it was, was it intimidating initially. I didn't think it was kids at all. I thought it was more like 3D chess, right? So, and then I, where did now, that come I, from? How did you know? Did you watch content? How did you know that? I don't know. If you're in gaming, you got to know about League, man. You, you, yeah, like, you know, I guess yeah, yeah. that big so these I'm days, aware right? of it. And yeah. I stayed away from it because I knew I would like it a lot. You know what I mean? So, and I tend to play a lot of FPSs and stuff because, you know, and uh, PUBG and H1Z1. And I played a lot. Of, I was streamed a lot of DayZ back in the day. So, you know, just running around shooting people is, is a good time for me. Um, and it's not team dependent because I knew as soon as it's team dependent, bad things can happen. You know what I mean? So uh, now I have an advantage, though, because I decided to play and I played on stream. So instantly somebody knows I can I can get ah. more. I'm getting more intel than the average person would. So do you think if you didn't stream, you would have been put off league more quick, quickly? Well, I don't know. It's I think there's a lot going on. Right. Like even so I'm going to put this perspective now is I have to explain this game to people. Right. And I say, well, there's three lanes. Uh, there's two in the bottom, they work together, one in the mid, one in the top, and there's one that roams around. The idea is take all the turrets and get all the way to the other side and wipe everything out. And they go, oh, okay, that makes sense. I go, and that's the only thing that does. Because after that, it changes. Yeah, after that, it gets crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny way of framing it. <laughs> it's true, though, right? It, yeah, it's, it's true. Like, it's actually it's true. Right. Yeah. Anything can happen, right? And, yeah. you know, and then depends on who's playing what. Now, I watch people play, and I'm, and I'm listening to the way you guys coach, and the guys, you know, they're seeing this, you know, like, you know, like, uh, you know, like the beautiful minds thing, you know, with all the math in the head, you know, those, those, when you watch people that are that are doing this and they're like, Oh, at three minutes and 82 seconds or whatever, I got to be over here with my left-handed sky. Like they got that down fat. You know, like I'm never going to play like that. I play a lot of poker and I used to do the math, but after a while I didn't do that. I just do pot odds and value betting. Right. If I'm getting my bet back in the poker game. Right. So, so I'll, I'll never play this game to that level and watching people play that is pretty amazing. But I don't think you need to be that good to play if you just do your fundamentals, right? Like I'm, I'm not playing against whoever. That's not going to happen. Um, but I, I think it is intimidating. And I, I think I did what most people did. I started, I went on YouTube. Uh, I started watching videos on once. And when I was talking to stream, I, I didn't know where to go. And they said, they're like, you would like top lane. You just, you're just up there by yourself. It's making life a lot easier, right? You don't want to jungle. You don't want to do this. And bot lane, you got to deal with supports and stuff. 
I'm like, oh, and I'm kind of a loner that way. So I'm okay. All right. If I can just be responsible for me, fine. And then if I only have to learn that, which again is a massive, a massive learning curve, right? Then I'm okay. But I did what everybody else did. I went to YouTube and I went to, I actually signed up to, uh, eventually I signed up to something with Game Leap, Game Leap, I think it was. They had little mini courses on, you know, this, that, and the other thing. I actually did Nisa's boot camp, which I found actually very helpful because uh, a lot of a lot of good guys in there and they had all those little videos on it. Again, I didn't have the whole time to go through all those videos. I have a job, right? You know what I mean? Um, and then I started watching other people. I found some streamers that play my champ and and, you know, and then I went that way. So, but I would say overall, I mean, if you just threw somebody in this game, it'd be like, what the hell's going on, man? And why, you know, yeah. and I can't even imagine, you know what I'm always totally impressed by shoutcasters, right? Like the knowledge they have to have of the game to shoutcast. Like if I, this is me shoutcasting. Okay. This guy's coming and he's doing something shiny and that guy's running away. And then there's more shiny and look at that guy's skin. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's shiny. And that that's it. Right. But they're like, oh, this, this is coming up. He's got four seconds to this. He's got seven seconds. Like I'm just, oh my God. You know, you got to know so, all the names of all the abilities. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. I you don't know. even know it. I genuinely don't even. <laughs> so actually, in the next evolution of my uh, streaming, because like streaming ranked and streaming at the same time is now 3D chess and on fire. It's, it's And I can't, I'm not Tyler. I can't do that for eight hours, you know? I mean, you interact so, with the chat a lot as well, Mike. Yeah. So that's oh, another thing on your mental yeah. stack. Yeah, I, I like interacting. That's why I play DayZ. And people, I'll, I'll finish a game and we'll talk for five, 10 minutes. And people are like, play another game. I'm like, dude, I need to decompress from that game. And I'm actually here to talk to people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So so that's it. Go watch somebody else. Like I watch my viewers will drop by like 25% if I'm not actively playing a game. The fact that I'm getting the views I am right now is like crazy, right? Because back in the day, I, I was streaming in 30, 380p because I had a horrible internet connection. You know what I mean? I would go to school I would get thir- still get 30 people watching me play DayZ. That was great. And then I go to school and I get like 100 plus because they had high speed internet. But I didn't. And they're like, well, you got to stream at school. I go, I can't because then I miss dinner. Then I miss driving somebody to a soccer game, you know. So we'll just suck it up and it'll, it'll be horrible. And then eventually, you know, I got like 75 and a good day I get 150, you know, back in the day when I was doing okay. And then I started, I do everything wrong, by the way, as a streamer. Like I've started, I've stopped, I don't have a schedule. You know, you know I switch games, I do all that stuff. And then suddenly to have a couple of hundred people, and then I started playing league and it was 50 people, 75 people, 150 people. Now suddenly it's like 300 people. That's crazy, right? The amount of people that stop watching me play a game are the number of people that used to watch me play another game. I'm like, I'm okay with this. I, I'm, You can go. I'm fine. You know what I mean? So I don't know what I was talking about. Um, oh, oh, I know. So so another layer of, of what I want, how I want to get better I watch another guy, Goliath Games. I don't know if you ever watched him. He, he's an OTP Urgot. He's got a great Urgot build on uh, MOBA, MOBA Fire. He did a great build there. So I'll watch him because he knows his matchups way better than I do, right? So, but I did find, what I did a couple of times was, if I got beat up by a champ, I would go play that champ in practice. Because I would get a feeling for their groove, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. So the next time I play, I'm going to go, well, they should try and do this next, you know? So over the next couple of months, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play Fiora. I'm going to play those champs, even just in draft or practice tool, so I can get an idea because I don't, I don't know what the hell they're doing half the time, right? You know what I mean? So, so that, no- that's a really good point you bring up, Mike, because <laughs> Curtis and I, we just recently started. We actually, for the last three years, we only coached golden above players because that's sort of where we felt like our expertise more was. Mm-hmm. And then just recently, we Well, actually, launched- I think we should go further back. So I don't know how much you know about us, but but we both were in the esports scene, and so I coached pro for three years, and and Nathan was a general manager, and so we were in, and we were both pro players in league, and so we oh, came cool. from like the 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 high you know, the the pro scene. We traveled the world, went we to China, Australia, Korea, we went for to a few years. world championship. All that That's sort awesome. Of stuff. Yeah, went to Worlds and MSI twice, and and right. and then what happened? We we decided to kind of step back from the esports scene and start individual coaching. Nathan went the jungle route. I went the mid lane route because we that's the roles we play. And we decided, look, we're gonna make it easier for us and and coach gold and above. So we specialize in coaching. We know pretty confidently how to get someone say gold to master pretty reliably, master to challenger sometimes, but not a hundred percent of the time. And we've recently started uh, coaching below gold. Now, irons, bronzes, and silvers. And it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. It is, it, it, and it is, okay, so every rank, so if I coach a bronze, 
Right. It is significantly harder to coach a bronze than a gold. It's significantly harder to coach a gold than a plat. Significantly harder to coach a plat than a diamond. The higher you get, the actually the easier it is to coach because they have yeah. more knowledge of the game. And you don't want to overwhelm the client because there's so much they don't know. And I got I, I'm trading on eggshells because I don't want to assume anything that they they don't know, right? And so it's actually been a very, very interesting experience. I've only recently just started this. It's like we have to like completely reverse engineer the game and yeah. the player journey. Bring it back to the ba absolute basics, even to the point of like, does this person know how to control a mouse and keyboard? You know, that's the yep. sort of thing that I'm yep. even having to think about. So I teach, I teach college, right? But I teach uh, first, second and third year courses. And I have to remind myself which course I'm teaching, right? Because it significantly impacts how we talk, right? And I like teaching the first year course and a lot of profs don't because they're like, well, that's intro stuff. Right. But I'm like, this is where you grab them. This is where you get them. This is where you get a love. Right. And plus it's, I call it the light bulb course. I'm like, Oh, this is a, this is a DOS screen. This is, you know, this is a firewall. This is, you know, cause they coming into it, they don't have to have computer knowledge. Right. So we're taking them from like zero to hero all the way through it. Uh, they get excited about it. And, and you have to be able to, to a, I don't assume they know anything. And you have to be able to explain fairly complicated concepts in simple terms so people can grasp it, right? And I use a technique called scaffolding. So, you know, you, you teach them one, you practice one. You teach them two, you practice one, you practice two. You teach them three, you do one, two. I didn't invent that. The military did. So that's where that's I learned cool. it, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it works. I do it in my labs so that it becomes reflex, right? You know what I mean? And I don't even have the time to go hang on the practice tool, right? I, like, I, I, if you guys are pro players, then you know how much you practice things, right? Like it's the little things you're like, oh, this is off by a bit. I'm going to practice this one thing until I got it down. So I'm kind of happy if I can do that in a game. And then third year, it's very different. The expectations are different. The conversations are different. I assume different knowledge. But if you can't teach the beginnings of something to somebody and you can't explain it well. And I talked about this before. Being able to do something and teach something are two different things. You yes. Know what I mean? Totally uh, agree. And some of the best players in the world or, you know, or the best w anything couldn't teach somebody to hit water if they fell out of a boat. I can't teach you my natural skill. Right. So being able to break that down. Now, the other thing I do is I do a lot of peer marking. So I get students to check out other labs because I'm like, if you can't check their lab, then you don't know what you're talking about. Right. And then then I get them to help them fix it because then they're explaining the concept and it's reinforcing it to them. That's really good. So, yeah, I love that. So that's a gear shift in your head as well, right? And actually, I just got coached last night and last night, night before, I don't know, it's all blur right now. And so he was saying, oh, and then he would see me do something. Oh, you know how to do that. And I could see, I could hear in his brain, he skips ahead three steps, right? You know what I mean? He's about, he's about to tell me you can cycle your W. I'm already doing that, right? You know, I'm already doing that. So we jump ahead, right? But started with, do you know how to do this, right? And talking about fundamentals, but fundamentals in the game and, and the concepts and and for that, and it was different. I've had a couple different coachings. They're different in the, in strengths and strengths and weaknesses to all that. So I'm just thinking coaching lower level. And I, this is just my opinion. Keep an open mind here. Where are most of the players in league? Low ELO. Yeah. You should be coaching low ELO, bro. <laughs> right. So you're going to get the biggest impact, I think, in the long run. I'm sure your services are worth money to the higher ELO. That's a different thing. That's a pro. I'm going to call that pro coaching. Right. That's very objective. Like there's a serious goal, but for getting lower players better. Right. You have to teach differently, assume nothing. And your market base is a lot bigger. There's a there's a reason people like my TikToks, my 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 getting stuck in low ELO. Sometimes it's me. Sometimes it's team diff. You know what I mean? So uh, whatever life diff or whatever is everybody's journey. A lot of people I get people on my TikTok. I've been in bronze for nine years, dude. So watching you get better, you know, it's cool. Right. Especially because I'm an old guy. Right. So. So I think it's cool that you're doing that, but your your objective has to be different. You have to you have to know your audience, right? It's a different ball game. And that's what we're realizing pretty quickly. Even the community is different. This is the interesting thing. So so the way uh, our discords work. So we have a discord for the original. So mine's the Midland Academy, and so in the Midland Academy, that's gold and above. So and below gold, so this, I've actually got a different separate discord, and then this discord is below gold. The type of person in that discord is very different in my below gold program most of them are 
very successful professionals in their given fields. There's, you know, engineers, airspace engineers, high school teachers. Yeah, I have a, I have a principal of a school playing league. And, 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 and yeah, so yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's definitely an older... You know how cool he's going to be at school if he can play league? No, but I think he said, I think in his introduction, he said he doesn't like to tell his students because, uh, yeah, they'll like, you know, view him differently. Or something oh, that like he that. plays games. Yeah, that he plays oh, leagues right. specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My students but, do that. But, if I start talking about video games, I had a kid today who goes, I can't believe I'm having a conversation with my college prof about video yeah, games. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> He's just looking at me weird, right? You know, so. yeah, they look at you weird. That's but, right. Yeah, but I know, yeah. I know yeah. for the fact his other prof plays World of Warcraft hardcore. The technician in the back is playing Destiny. Uh, like, and I, and you know, whatever. Right. So like the gamers are everywhere. So, but you're yeah, saying, the, yeah. So personalities are different and all that personalities stuff. are different. So the way you even talk, like, like in my, in my other discord golden above, there's a lot, I would say there's more memes and there's a lot of zoomers more and stuff. Kids, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah, some like older teenagers, you know, like 16 year olds, 17 year olds, age, and there's still some 30 year olds and stuff there. But, but my point being is that the lower elo community, it's a different breed. It's actually very much a different, at least so far from what I've noticed. So I'm even having to adjust even the way, just just being careful the way I communicate, right? Because again, you know, you want to resonate with the people that that you're coaching and, and use language that they can latch on to as well, which is something that I'm really trying to focus on. So because the thing that you said there, uh, Mike, that's what we got into the conversation mm -hmm. about uh, us expanding what we've found yeah. from coaching new players to the game is what you mentioned there is that you have to learn what every champ on the game does. That's like step one, because that's the right. assumed knowledge. And that is, we get a, a new champion added every couple of months. Like that's insane, you know? So even me, I don't really fully know what like learn, Nyla does and stuff like that. Yeah, Still there's some, some champions there that I don't really I've know. I've never fully. played those champs. I, well, I don't know what, really like, know specifics of the kit. There's there's lots of, uh, let's say there's recent there's some recent coaching drama that I'm sure you're aware of, right? You know, so with with uh, Nice and other people and stuff like that, right? I'm a fan of Nice. He's a good guy. He came and talked to my class when I was doing the esports course and and helped me out a lot, right? So oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, and then and uh, and part of my one of the projects I did for my esports thing was showing how collaboration can grow your business, like your your social media content, just like we're doing right now. And uh, so the first stream that I did with him was to show my class how it works. And like, well, did you get better? I go, I had 400 viewers. Did we win? We won, right? Like like. You know, like, so, like I'm learning how to play league, but I'm also playing Twitch, right? Like I, you know, what, what, what do people like to watch? Am I having a good time? Is different things. So, but I watch that guy coach and it doesn't matter what champ it is. He knows that he's like, oh, that champ does it, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, how do you do, how do you, like I played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons when I was a kid, right? And that kept me off the street, which is a good thing. And I remember having the Dungeon Master's manual pretty much memorized. Right. Somebody says this is going. On. I go, no, no, you got to check page 101. It's this, that and the other thing and blah, blah, blah. It's Tuesday. That's not going to work because when you're young, you can absorb all of that. You can absorb it. It's just, and just, you also have the time as well. Right. How much time oh, did that yeah, take yeah. For you to, to do yeah. to memorize the whole the manual? When I was younger, the people that learned IT fastest were young people and older people because they had time. Right. Yeah. You, know I mean? so you, can, you right. can just deep dive into stuff. And I was like that before. Actually, now that I'm doing all, all this stuff, I don't do I do a lot of my IT stuff. Because I would like find some interesting technology. That's what I'm doing for the next 30 days, right? I'm going to learn this inside and out, right? I don't do that now. Now I'm stuck trying to learn ergot, you know, for God's sake. <laughs> trying to decide which skin to wear, you know, because, you know, some are, you know, pay to win and pay to lose. And I don't know. And blah, 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 you know, so whatever, right? So, um, yeah, having that that knowledge would be is, but, but once again, though, in low ELO, this is just my opinion, fundamentals go a long way. And the few coachings I'm having, you don't know what you don't know, right? You 100% don't. And that's when people say, get better. But I don't know what I don't know. I can't get yeah. better yeah. unless somebody tells me, right? Right? Then that's why you get mentoring. That's why you get coaching. That's why these things learn. I have students that come to my school every year, and I love them. And they're smarter than I am. I know they are. I know more than they do right now, though, right? And I tell them, look, I get paid no more or less if you like me. But if you learn everything I have to teach you and you go off and run some big company and come back and tell me I don't know anything, I win. Right. And I win every year. <laughs> right. It's awesome. Right. So so you may like just, this is my opinion. You may not know all the chance, but oh, guess what? You know what that means, Nathan? You'll have to learn some stuff, Mr. Pro Player, that you're going to have to learn. <laughs> right. So and there's there's nuances to every chance. Right. So and then but the fundamentals do not change. Right. And I don't know even all the fundamentals. I'm still learning like the timing on the waves, you know, because some of these concepts are hard to get. And there's also a thing in teaching called UDL. 
universal design for learning. So when I'm doing stuff, I'll post like links to walkthroughs or something that on what I'm teaching. Then I also put videos up and I'll put, you know, or different and I'll explain and I'll see that, oh, this guy's not getting the way I'm explaining it. So I'm going to explain it in a different way and then another different way until they get it. Right. So what works for you? And that's the great thing about being a coach. What works for you not might not work for that specific player. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's actually a big challenge, I think, with coaching is adapting. Yeah, to absolutely. Coding. It is a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Figuring out what works, what doesn't with that, you know, and then being adapt. Same with the game. Like the meta changes every time you coach somebody new, right? Curtis and I, we've, we've talked before about uh, on the podcast because we actually bring up stories a lot of our coaching clients that we've failed. And we have oh. sort of like a, a graveyard of like oh, no, stories yeah. and examples of like. But we're not shy about it. No. Because again. That's good. You know, we learn from our clients and there's some clients that we don't at that time when we're working with them, we don't have the knowledge or the teaching ability to help them yet, you know, and sometimes we just got to be honest. Well, and now we think, oh, okay, two years ago, if we went back in time, knowing what we know now, we probably would have known how to help them, but you, you got to learn. You're getting better every day. Craft, well, I remember the right? first year I was teaching college. I tried to be my students' friends. That was the worst mistake I ever made in my life. They mm. turn on you. They don't care. And there's blood in the water right now. Mm. Now I don't care. And they're like, well, now they're like, well, what if I fail? Well, then I go to lunch. You didn't do your job. I did mine. You're not doing yours. That's up to you. And me helping you, being your friend is not my job, right? So I will be friendly. I will be respect you. But my job is to be your prof. Like I, and I never made that mistake again, right? Ever, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm still friendly. I did the same thing with my daughter. I'm, I want to be friendly with my daughter. But if I have to make a choice between dad and friend, it's dad, right? Yeah. You can be mad about it later. That's fine. You know, so... So that's a challenge for you, but you, but hopefully you learn from that stuff. It must've yeah. been an interesting transition though, going from pro and manager uh, at that level, playing at that level, moving into this space though, right? It was a different ball game. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it literally, the way we both viewed it was we're going to go in and assume we actually don't know what we're talking about at all anymore. We're just going to assume we know nothing and just start from scratch. And so literally what we did, even though we would live in the game of league for seven years before even that, we yeah, play, yeah. live and breathe the game. And so what we, uh literally the way we did it was okay i will quit sorry <laughs> somebody in the <laughs> what comments we did was um literally okay we're gonna play the game and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try and okay any concept anything that i do intuitively i'm gonna try and break that down into concepts and then from those concepts i would make videos and so over time and thinking about that why am i doing this what because when you play the game for this long at such a high level you're you're making there, there is probably 12 things that I, I'm already processing instantaneously without even me realizing I'm having to do a deep dive and be like, why am I standing here? That I know that's good, but why am I there? And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's a, and then blah, blah, blah. And then you kind of go through and you kind of can break down and isolate those concepts. And then you can kind of teach that. But it, that first, I would say first two years was literally just trying to get our head around what are we actually doing? Like what, what makes us win League of Legends? What makes a great mid laner? What makes a great jungler? And then I feel like now it's only now we're in our third year of coaching full time, mid, only in our roles. Now we're finally starting to make some pretty, I mean, pretty confident in what makes the skill set of a jungler and what makes the skill set of a mid laner. But think about that. That's three years full time. That's yeah. Thousands between us. You've done we've you've done like six, seven thousand coaching sessions. I've done like five thousand coaching sessions. Even then, just it's just scraping the surface. Mm. So that's a, that's a testament to the complexity of the game and how much assumed knowledge there is. And this is the other thing, Mike. League is a game, as you know, is difficult because you can't drill shit. There's very there's some things you can. You can go and practice on drill ergot combos, whatever it might be. But for the most part. The fundamentals aren't, you can't isolate the fundamentals because the way you manage the wave is directly tied to uh, the trading. And then that's tied to your your resource management and your and resets the and your warding. And, and then the, what's the, happening on this land, the roaming. You can't you. isolate yeah. any of them. You're, you're learning in a, a game, you're learning while doing all of them at the same time. So, league is very difficult in that sense. That's why games like, Street Fighter, like a lot of those fighting games, you can literally grind in that practice tool, yeah. isolate specific combos, grind that up. Even in Counter Strike, when I played uh, high level Counter Strike, we would set the map up, and, and we all have these guns where we're trying to take this site. You, we can rep. You get the smokes down. I'll get the flash in. You can drill that. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got that down pat. League, every game, it's a different matchup, different uh, junglers. 
different players. It's just, and you can't isolate anything. So what so do we do? Can we I play can thousands I of games? So I had a really good question for you, and then I forgot that. But I, but I'm flashing back to what you asked me about when I played the game. And it's interesting. It's like anything else. Like when you first start driving, there is so much going on, right? Eventually, a lot of that becomes second nature, right? And when I first started playing, <clears throat> I was overwhelmed every game because this whoever this guy is, because I don't know what the matchup is, jumping around, you know, like a, like a rabbit on fire. I have no what's going on. I'm not aware of what's going on in the river. I don't know what's going on in the bottom. I don't know any of that kind of stuff, right? And the more I play the less I hyper-focus and the more I'm look like I'm doing CSing and looking at my map, knowing that I'm not going to get engaged. Right. And, and knowing that you can't kill you, knowing that. Yeah. You yeah. 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 Right. So that, that's all, that's all there. Yeah, that, that awareness comes over time. You know what I mean? And I think that's, and so what, so I, I'm going to disagree with you a little bit mm -hmm. in that the fundamentals, you know, you know, the uh, fundamentals are always there. Right. But then after that situation dictates, right. You know, if you suddenly have a, you know, a Yumi troll that's up top, well, things just got different, right? You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm not saying to be clear, to be clear, I'm not saying the fundamentals don't exist every game, but what I'm saying is that you can't the isolate variables. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't, I can't learn, like, even if, the, you know, the practice tool, the practice games against bots to learn a champ, that's cool, but you're not learning against a player who does. So, there, so there's an old rule in, in video game production is no video game survives contact with the players that comes from a military one is no plan survives contact with the enemy, right? You guys played at a pro level, you know, here's our plan. Well, that plan's gone, right? Make yeah. the plan. Or Mike Tyson, everyone has a plan to get punched in the face. Right, exactly. hundred percent. Right. So, Oh God, I got ganked at 38 seconds. It's all over. Right. So, <laughs> so yeah, so that, so things change very rapidly. So very being able to come back from that and being able to, you know, being able to adapt to that, being able to feel like I played a game last night. It was very, I don't know what happened, but Anvia rotated up from the middle. They got mad, right? I don't know what happened, but they came up and started helping me. And then I backed and they stayed in my lane, pushing on my laner. So I rotated mid. Actually, Waldo told me to rotate. So I rotated mid. So I took over there. We kind of switched lanes for a minute. Then I rotated up. We killed my laner again and they went back. I have no idea why that happened, but it happened. You know what I mean? It worked out fine. So you just, yeah. So, so being able to do that is great, right? So I really want to play Clash, but it'd be so easy to look me up and they go, he plays Urgot. We'll just ban Urgot. He's out, right? Well, that's actually a big mistake a lot of people make. They they get in. So, you know, you're talking about your uh, college doing the esports, right? Right. What, what we've known, we have a lot of people write into our podcast saying, you know, I'm, I, I love the game. I play the game. And, you know, they have a small champion pool because they're trying to, you know, eliminate the variables like you right. are and have developed that champion mastery because that's what's going to allow them to learn the game. And what happens is they, oh, look, a position to open up on my local esports team, blah, 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 and they join, but then they only play one or two champions. So then what does the coach say? The coach says, oh, you got to learn, you know, five or six champions. Then this player is left with a conundrum thinking, well, if I play five or six champions, I'm not going to go anywhere because I'm going to be so overwhelmed. I don't even understand the game, but at the same time, they want to, you know, they want to get involved in competitive play. So what we say is that this is an unfixable solution. You actually, the sad reality is you got to distinguish between genuinely trying to get better at the game or quote unquote, kind of playing around and having fun because you cannot have a champ pool of six, seven champions. If you're in bronze. That's just not going to yeah. happen. Yeah. And if you well, try to, you can. You're, you're just staying in bronze, though. Yeah, that's right. You can't you're going to stay in bronze, right? Or, or you know, de-ranking. Yeah, you can have 20 and, champs and the if you is want. That but people don't yeah, realize yeah, yeah. this. People don't yeah. realize that, and, and that champion mastery is the foundation of the game. And, and, and the problem is that this is where it gets conflicted, is that League is a bloody hard game. Clash and competitive is a different ball game as well. Because like you said, they can look you up. Uh, yep, yeah, game of that only plays Urgot. That's banned. What do you do? That's why that's why I have an alt account that's S4. But anyway, so um, I have a question for you now that you're coaching. Is, I, I'm very curious. I've been wanting to ask somebody this question. So, and you guys are the right guys to ask this question. You guys played at a competitive level, right? Competitive esports is a different animal than solo queue, right? And is it's coaching cool. them different? Like, is coaching... Different. Co coaching a, a pro esports team like that's that's and working with that's that's a very different that's a, that's an entirely it's, different phenomenon, right? It's not even in the same universe, in my opinion. Well, it, it depends. It, it depends what it depends on the level though you're talking about because so you're talking about uh, let's say your college team, or you're talking about pro. Are you talking about like the pro? No, level? pro, pro, like any any like from college to pro, like that that is because, a different animal. 
then yeah, because because the way that we we talk about it is that solo queue is the most important thing to improve in the game. We actually say that when you're playing competitive, like let's say if a let's say if a platinum or let's say a diamond player in solo queue wants to go and then play in your competitive um, college team. Right. We believe that person's actually not going to get better at the game. They're sort of going to be playing like, you know, a, the competitive game in a way, but they're not going to suddenly be a challenger player in solo queue. And at the end of the day, you could have five diamond players scrim, have insane communication, work together all the time. They'll never beat five solo queue only challenger players ever. Ever. Impossible. Never. Really? You, you could, you know, I would even say less than that. You get, let's say we get five. Let's say we get five grand master players or even high master players that have never yeah. never played together at all. And they and you versus a team that has five diamond four players that have scrimmed for two years, scrim every week, it, they won't even it won't even be remotely close. The diamonds guys won't, win every the diamond time. guys will get wiped out. Yep, yeah. every time. Because Why? Th this okay, so this is the way th th the game works is that solo Q. Okay, let's take even your experiences let's take ergot in lane right 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 before the game even becomes remotely macro you know this before the grouping happens and the dragon fights and the team fights what happens well you're in lane phase right for it at minimum eight minutes before the yeah. map starts to open up a little bit right at minimum right. and then in, in saying that the junglers as well they have eight minutes of roam, roaming around the map doing anything ganking lanes doing all this stuff the 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 gap in lane skill and the gap in jungle understanding is so large that by the time the game even remotely gets to a point where the strategy involved it's a whitewash because the 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 skill difference is so large just in the lane phase and just in the underlying game understanding in the first 8 to 10 minutes mm. and and people don't get this until you know the difference so to frame it this way right i'm going I'll, I'll use an analogy here I talk about um, I talk about Mount Everest. So I believe the solo queue ladder is um, it actually the game really starts at Master Tier, and the reason this is the case is because now at Master Tier everyone now knows every like has champ mastery. They know what all the champs in the game do. They have competence over their own role. They they are able to understand the game holistically. So now what you've got is now you've got 10 players in a game actually playing the game of League of Legends, real strategy involved. Before that point, before Master Tier, all you're getting is a lot of time capitalizing on the mistakes of the enemy. Lots of inconsistency in the Too much details. inconsistency. So what you'll get, right, in say Diamond 4, you'll get a player who's playing, you know, playing, or it was say Ergot, they will miss ours. They will miss their flash ease. They won't can be consistently warding at two minutes 30. They will die to a level three minute gank. These are basic mistakes that will happen all the way up until about master. Now at master, when everyone's not making really, you know, people still make basic mistakes, but let's oh, say okay. for, for the most part, now you're playing the game of League of Legends. Now the Mount Everest analogy comes into play. Master tier zero LP starts, you're at base camp. Challenger 1.2 thousand LP is you're now you're near the peak. But think about that in terms of number. We've got a thousand LP there. That is the difference between in just raw LP difference. That's from what iron to gold, gold about. Gold to gold. Gold one. to think about that. Think about the difference between an iron far four and a gold four. And then you get that from master to challenger. So, and that's even, and that's not to mention the complexity of the game at, is a much but higher it, level. That's a great thing though. I will never have that problem. <laughs> right. But my point being, right, is that I'll let's never take have one of those problem. players though. Let's What's take that? someone that can climb to Mount Everest and let's take yeah, yeah. someone who can't even get to base camp in their level of fitness in a real life analogy. You know, that that's the difference is that large, but people don't get that until they, they play that game and they get to that level. They don't really know how big the difference is. Yeah. So no, no, I see that, but that's like like playing house poker and going to the casino and then going to a turn a pro tournament. It, they are different. That's right. Games, It'd right? be a completely different ball game. Well, uh, but but I mean, if you go back to the coaching, still numbers, right? You know what I mean? Like most people are are bronze. They're they're they're, they're not going to go. They're not going to go pro, right? right? You know? And but time back to the, your initial question, which was: Is coaching pro different to coaching the average person? Yeah. It's literally like a different universe because. Um, the amount of assumed knowledge and the level we're thinking, like you can take even this, like 
let's take a random diamond player, Mike, who's been playing the game for eight years. Right. They actually have no idea. They watch Bo, one of the best junglers in the world. They actually have very little idea what Bo's thinking. Think about that. This place, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they actually have, they, they will scrape the surface of understanding what that chair, that player d- does. Think about that. A, someone who's been dedicating life to a game for eight years still won't even be able to scrape the surface of understanding what Bo is doing in, in these games. Sure. But then, you know, it's the same like watching Tiger Woods. Like, you know, I could smack a ball around, but I don't know what Tiger's doing. So th- those are very different. What I'm saying is like the, so I'm guessing the communications and the objectives are different at a pro level than mm-hmm. solo queue. And they're much different at different levels that mm-hmm. you're, and you're finding that now for coaching lower level players. So translating that and finding out what's important, right, to a lower player is, is very different than what's going to happen to your Mount Everest guy, right? Or like old old gamer dad like me, right? So, <laughs> right. So even well, playing the work. And also, I was just going to say one more thing here. Sure. When you're coaching pro at the highest level, you're assuming that everyone knows how to do their job. So now, like at the highest level, everyone knows now, they know all their matchups, they know how yeah. to play all the champions. They they have the muscle memory to think of, about all this stuff. Now, really, what pro coaching at the highest level is, is actually we've got two compositions. This composition and this composition. We need to understand at a very granular level how these how these compositions interact and how exactly we should play out the composition via early pathing into the way laners should play their waves, the way the team fight should interact. We're getting into the details of how compositions interact at very granular levels. It's actually not about lane at that stage, at the highest, highest, highest level. Coaches don't need to help someone with their lane phase because it's already they're already insanely good at the game. So you're actually not teaching the game. You're not teaching the specifics of the game. You're teaching the interactions. You're thinking at a very, very high level. Yeah. Well, I I just like it in bronze where I got to the point where I died, but I know that my mid should have rotated to me, right? Like he should have, right? And then when I get one that does rotate, I'm like, I'm really happy, right? Or those kind. Or when I when I play mid. By the way, I like playing mid because then you're like a mini jungle, right? And Urgot's kind of a fun yeah, man. You're in the middle of the map. You get an influence everywhere. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Suddenly I'm like, oh, so I'm going down here. I'm going over there. Okay, well, oh, we're going, I'm going to push my wave and go cause trouble. I like that a lot, actually, to be honest with you. You would and like I, Rumble now, mid, by the way, and Galio mid. You What's would that? like Rumble mid and Galio mid. If you wanted to play mid, and because your style, you said you like to fight and brawl. Yeah. Rumble mid and Galio mid are two champions that you're just brawling. You're, you can well, maybe you're shoving back and back you're here. moving. Maybe I'll take Rumble back to mid because I have a hard time carrying him in top. And then I have a hard time with Rumble at the second part of the game. I can win my lane, but then in the you become a support player later with Rumble, right? Because you're not like I like fighting with Urgot because I'm throwing myself in and I'm I'm you know what I mean? I'm I'm the shield, right? You know what I mean? So which is awesome, right? So I like that. So if it's and I have a hard time because playing Yorick is a completely different mindset, right? I'm trying mm. to annoy people until I can take their tower. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna go push, right? And I, I was talking about this last night, my coaching. And the hardest parts, I think, is like, and you were talking about it too. I think, I think it was you, yeah. Is that one v nine concept, which which is not a good concept, right? No. Um, and then I was saying, and I was talking to Waldo. I said, well, I need to learn when to when to, and he made it very clear, like when should I go rotate mid? And in bronze, and as you're well aware, it can turn to ARAM very quickly, right? When people will get 20 kills and go, well, how can we lost? Well, you didn't take an objective. It's not a kill game. Like you can, I put, I've got a video up where I get one kill. One. <laughs> I get no deaths and we win. Why? Yeah, that's I, great. So I went and took towers. I went and I put pressure on the map. Everybody had to chase me and then everybody could do what they're trying to do. Right. So, so people are, I don't think people are clear at a lower level. You're talking about the high level. They're playing a very high level game. At a lower level, some pe- people don't understand what they're playing. Right. Like the game is take towers. That's that's the game. It's a tower game, right? Yep. You know what I mean. So so doing that, and York York's good at that. But learning that Rumble, I just couldn't do with the top, right? So by the way, I was you know what I was doing, and you can do this at low level. You can't do it at your super Everest Mount climbing level. But I got annoyed because there's some serious matchups where I just die. Urgot's like got to hide under the tower, right? So I started running Arcane Comet, right? So poke are you not meta? What's that? Just poke with Q. Yeah, I just poke with Q. I start, and then the next thing you know, I'm playing against champs that normally are pushing me. I got them under their tower, and people are like, "You can't do it." I go, "It's a meta game. I can play counter to the meta anytime I freaking want." There are pros and cons to that. I can't throw myself into a fight anymore. But now, so because there's that thing, right? The insanity doing the same thing again and again and again and expecting a different result, right? So I'm like, "Well, these matchups never work for me, so I might as well do something different, 
right? You know what I mean? And that's why everybody watches Korean builds. They're always doing something different, right? You know, the 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 number one thing, Mike, that I've that helps lower elo clients in a very, very skins, simple way, skins. right? It's all skins. It's all skins. <laughs> skins? <laughs> skins win games. Um right? is understanding how understanding how your build and your runes influence your mindset. And like you said there, you said, if I go Comet, I can't throw myself in. If I go Comet, yeah, I might have a stronger lane phase, but it, you know, my mid game might take a bit of a toll. And so what I'm really big on, big on is um, may, helping the client know how should they be thinking. If I'm in this game and I'm playing this champion, I've got this, I've got this setup here. How should I be thinking? What should my mindset be like? What's the identity of my champion? What's my role in this composition at a very basic level? Am I a team fighter? Do I like to split? Do I want to split push and, and duel people? Do I <clears> want to make picks? And understanding at a basic level how your runes, your build, and your identity and your role in the comp all combine together and have synergy between them goes a very, very long way. And you'd be surprised at how many people don't actually understand how a build or a setup influence the, their mindset. They might go that build that wins them that lane, but then they don't adapt the way they play in the mid game because you might be squishier. You know, you you might well, build yeah, that. I don't, early. I don't like I don't like lethal ergot because I'm squishy, and that's no good for the way I play. Play right because I'm going to flash E into the whole team. Right, to, and you'd be better off that that interaction. Right, so yeah, and you would be better off. And this is what I tell a lot of players. You can sit there swapping your runes and builds, you know, you know, do that. And that's fine. You can, that's a genuine thing you can do. But for a lot of people, they're better off just sticking to one build, one setup, getting really, really good at one setup, because then what? They know exactly what to look for, what situations to look for. When they're strong, when, when they're, they're strong, when they're weak, and how to contribute to the game no matter what. Does and that that's what I do. Nathan, like in jungle, is that the same way you're thinking? Or what do you think when you're having this conversation? Yep. Yeah. Same way. Same thing. We're actually uh, talking about Diana builds recently about uh, the demonic embrace, like the tankier style versus the assassin. And I'm like, well, just play the tankier style and you're going to have to adapt the way you play fights, but it's better to just learn stick one way. One. Stick to if one. If you're going to wear a full assassin, go full assassin. Yeah. Just commit. Yeah. 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 I only mess with some of my runes. That comment's like a really off meta and I do it mm. for fun, especially in draft and stuff like that. But I noticed even switching to uh, like from bone plating to second win to overpower that those three things have a big decision that's a that's a decision even that one rune which i didn't know it had that much impact has a complete impact actually lately and because other people once in a while i'll go second win shield and i fast back and get a call and now i'm unkillable for two 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 levels right d, so d shield second wind is a very very powerful yeah. combo yeah yeah mm -hmm. and then you get a call it's like come here i want to talk to you man i want to kill you right so mm -hmm. so um Sorry, we're talking about all sorts of stuff here. So, but I mean, for You're me, all over the place, yeah. <laughs> no, that's why. That's where my brain goes, right? So it's getting later for me. So, and it usually takes me a while to gear down, anyways. And tomorrow I got an early class, so I'm up at six a.m. I always try and do labs in eight eight a.m. 8 classes because nobody listens to a lecture at eight. They just uh, they don't sit in the cup, right? So, yeah. Um, I'm interested to see how your transition goes to 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 coaching. Uh, lower level players and there's a lot of them and like i said your objectives are different and being able to translate and talk to that without having that guaranteed communication of say a high level level player yeah. right you know what i mean so that'll be that's a pretty interesting journey for you guys yeah we'll be sharing that journey on the bbc episodes over this coming year mm. um so we'll probably i'd be updating the community as we go along and learn new things and thanks for coming question. what's that i was just gonna say so the last question that um oh, yeah. i want to ask you mike is so our audience i did a, a little quick thing on our youtube analytics uh 88 percent of our audience is from the ages of 13 to 34. so 12 percent is uh or then the next 10 percent are 35 to 44 then over 44 we have like one percent of our audience yeah yeah um what would you recommend we do or let's say ride in general to get players you know more older players your age into the game I was actually looking up stats because I always talk about this stuff. So the interesting thing is the mean age of gamers now is 35, right? 50% uh, are women. Uh, I looked at the league stats too. Uh, the overall player base for league, uh, the higher percentages, uh, I just, I've got it over here, is like 35 to 40. Where did I put that? Hang on, hang on. Um, well, our audience says here that actually your audience, right? of our audience is 25 to 34. So over 25, half of our audience is actually. 
Yeah, I got. I think I looked at my a lot of my my audience is younger as well, but the older ones are starting to find me. Um, well, I think you probably have the answer to that. Are you, are you talking about how you get talk to older people or how you? Yeah, I mean, just your advice. Yeah, how do we get them excited playing the game? Uh, I mean, playing. I think, ranked, already, maybe I think well. they're already playing the game because if you look at the league stat, who's plays leagues? I think forty percent of them are something like 30 to 40 years old, 11% mm -hmm. or 40 plus, and then 40, 11% or 55 or something like that. And then 1% is me. So, um, uh, I think, I, well, I think, I think you've already got the answer to your question there. You, so look, there's, there's two different parts of league as far as I can I, I can find is the people that want to be super double plus master or whatever. And they, they have that skill level, and they do that at a young age, and that's where they're going. And then there's everybody else that's playing the game. And I think, I think, I think if you do more low elo stuff, if you're if you're you're doing the 101 stuff, um, people underestimate the value of the 101 stuff. And being able to get people to easily step into that pond instead of being intimidated, that'll just that'll just bring everybody any. And you already said that you've got people that are principals and space engineers and all that stuff like that, right? So because I think the hardcore players, they, they've made a choice. They're, that's their path. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of house league players out there. So you have to get to those house league players. Right. So and I don't know if you guys I know you guys do YouTube videos, but <clears throat> clearly um, this would be my opinion is if you're making um, videos on how to play league, do you do that or do you do it from your coaching? Because I, I know do, there's I, what's that? We we both do some educational content. Yeah. yeah. Champion guides. We we so we like if Champion you type guides, in like yeah. uh Vi guide, I'll pop up. And that's sort of our introduction to that's sort of where we started with champs, our... a lot of champion specifics. Because what, what's okay. the first thing you probably do when you when you want to learn the game, right? I want to learn how to play this champion. Yeah, I went I didn't do that. I went right to top lane uh mechanics and did a course right. on top. Okay, lane. so that's what you searched up. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I and that's the stuff I was looking at. The bigger mechanics, I'm gonna pick whatever champion, and then I then I'm gonna pick a champion, right? So I think okay. educational content is is a way through. People watch stuff, videos, because they want to watch really good players play, which is, you know, every, that's why people watch pro sports of any kind, right? And they have a knowledge of the game, and that's why it's interesting. They Or they watch them because they're inter entertaining, uh, or they watch them because they're educational, right? So in league, I mean, there's a massive industry that, on how to get better, right? 100%. And that's why a lot of people watch these videos, a lot of why people are good, right? But I think people underestimate the impact and the size of the pool of the gamer dads out there and the people that just want to get better not being and not be not be told to int in. so learning about top lane learning that you know there's i i looked up see when i okay this is my journey when i looked i said i started watching videos i didn't go on champ right i went i went top lane i went wave management i went macro i went don't forget i'm an older guy so i already have my educational strats in mind and i'm not looking at how do i get better at buy i don't care Right. I'm going to work that out. Then I went and found a guide for my my champ specifically. But I, I immediately wanted to learn those bigger picture items. Right. So and I, and and, I, you know, it's interesting because sometimes I'll make TikToks. I think, well, everybody knows this. And but then I'll make the TikTok. And then guess what? Lots of people don't. Younger audience does it. The older doesn't. You know, so I don't I don't think you should underestimate that level of skill. You can do the beautiful mind thing, but that. You told me that you know it's one percent of the people that play that. Well, that's one percent of your audience, right? This is seventy percent. What is the stats? Six, sixty percent of people are in silver and bronze, or something like that. You guys do. What's the what's the number? The of overwhelming that? majority is like bronze and silver. Bronze, silver, and yeah, low, gold four. Yeah, right. So if I hit gold four, I win, right? So yeah, you're you're literally very high up on the yeah. You're actually line. the top top yeah. what top thirty percent or something, right? Yeah. At if I get S four, I'll be pretty happy. If I if I get yeah. S four again, I already got S four on my alt because my MMR was busted last year. Every single get an alt. I played an alt. I did my placements. Played a couple games. Bang! I was S four. I actually, you know, what I have a lot of fun when I play flex with the my students because they're all higher level. They're diamond and stuff like that. I end up going against gold tops, and I hold my own. I'm like, okay, I must be doing something right. And then after that, it's improving the little get the the little the little parts of it. You know what I'm saying? But I I I, I, I think that's that's you know you got to know where everybody is, right? You want to do a small jazz festival. You want to do a big concert. Well, where are the people? Right. That kind of stuff like that. Like even just doing league content means I'm not doing dancing videos. So I'm not going to, you know, not a million people are going to, you know, you know, so I, I think, I think looking that and, and so, and this, this is my opinion. So keep an open, open mind, but this is my opinion as an educator. If you can improve lower level players and you can explain everything you just said to me uh, in a way that somebody else can consume at that level, then you're a good teacher. Does that make sense? I agree. I think we know that it's going to be, I mean, we said three years. I mean, you've obviously been teaching for way longer than 
than three years. A couple years. of whiles, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so even for us 10 years now, we'll look back on this conversation and be like, ah, oh, we could have explained this way better and all that sort of stuff. Sure, so, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's, but don't, so, so that that knowledge that you talk about intuitively, that is not intuitive knowledge for somebody else. And if that's intuitive knowledge because of a gift, then you have to explain it to somebody, right? So you got to take what you know and break it down into legitimate edible chunks of it. And also, I don't think you should be afraid of the fact that everybody else and their sister is making guides, right? This is your take and your guide on it. Like, like uh, having gotten coached once or twice, I get a lot of offers for people to coach me. And I'm like, I'm stubborn. I just want to screw up on myself. And, you know, so, and then I'll take, take the occasional coaching. Um, but it helps, you know what I mean? But being able, sorry, sorry, coach shopping, I think is a thing, right? Like I, I got it coached by niece. I love the guy. Uh, some people hate him or they don't respond well the way he does, right? And somebody else takes a very high level that maybe that one. And you've got coaching failures, right? So you, th so teaching is a skill, man. Like people, Absolutely. people blow out. Yeah. It, it is a hundred percent a skill and it puts what you know and how you translate that into action, right? You might be the best player in the world, but if you can't teach me how to, what the difference between, like I got to explain what the difference between freezing and my question last night was talking about, they were saying, well, you need to push your wave. And I said, what's the difference between me pushing the wave and him freezing it? And there's a difference. It's who's got initiative, who's who's making that happen. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense, right? You know, that makes that makes much more sense, right? Or why I want to pick, why I want to be in this area, or why I want to, you know, those. And some they explain that very well, right? And and then like when I was getting coached, my question is why, right? I don't need you to tell me to do A, B, C because it works. Why does it work? And it, and it goes to my fundamentals and off we go, right? Somebody asked me to coach. I go, I can't coach you. I can't coach anybody. I can coach <laughs> you how to look pretty and play, or the, the, do your E. That's it. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> actually, because I take a lot of flack for flashy and stuff. And the, and the guy I was working with, Waldo, goes, I actually work the numbers. It's a quarter second difference between an E flash and a flashy. E. And if and if bronze, somebody is avoiding that, they're, they're not going to be in bronze very long. So don't worry about it until later, until it becomes a new problem. You know what I mean? So anyways, that's just my opinion. What do I know? You know, but I think it's more interesting. By the way, I had lots of people coming over my chat. They, you got to be in the MLA, man. So that's so I appreciate the support there. So and like the <laughs> same way, like I'm just going to enjoy the journey. Right. I've had 50 viewers. I've had five viewers. I've had 2300 viewers. We'll just see how this uh, we're all about enjoying the process and it's, journey. Yeah. So well, but let's look. Like, can we go all the way back to that? Because if you're playing a game and you're not having a good time, you shouldn't be playing that. Game. Yes, Absolutely. exactly. We, we should, we're only playing league because we have fun. People it's forget healthy. that. People forget if you, that. If you're easily. having fun and you're enjoying the beauty of everything going well, then you should play that game. But if you're angry at and throwing things across the room and your mom's yelling at you, you you need you need to play a star do or something. You know, the, yeah, something. we've literally told people to move on from league yeah. many, many times. Hmm. Yeah. Some well, league that's, is yeah. not a game for everyone. No, not 100 percent right? So and you have to be clear what your objectives are and stuff like that, right? I, I I'm gonna leave you with this. The great thing is. You know, I, I suck, right? And uh, and, and and many often, but I have uh, I have uh, I have what is it? I have um, streamer privilege. I can play a game and get totally trashed by a kale top, but if I get one good kill, he's going on TikTok, man. <laughs> yes, like, and you then you suck, can play all the bees. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he's yeah, like, yeah. you like six times. Like, but I got you when you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll die for the, kill, the rest of the kill, man. I'll die for the kill and for the TikTok every time, man. Every time, so. <laughs> All right, Mike, this this uh, conversation was very insightful. It was really awesome to get to get another completely different perspective. Yes. As I said, that we, you know, 88% of our audience, you know, is under the age of 34. So um, it's really been awesome talking to you and sort of especially hearing your journey of how you got into the game and, you know, you, especially your open-mindedness. Again, I think that a lot of the older people, I hope that they, you know, sort of yes. watch this and get, you actually inspire these people as well. It's like, you know, pick up league, give it a crack. You know, obviously it's going to be a, out of your a comfort zone. bit of a time yeah, investment, yeah. but like, there's so much beauty in the game. And, and, I, and I want to compliment. You can rage at the kids. It's great. <laughs> and I want to compliment your, your enthusiasm and passion because it actually, it's like, Dude, I got to get my shit together. I wish I could have this much energy. And then it's really, and it's something I really appreciate about your content, just about your personality. So, well, I appreciate it, man. I love, but you know, I, you know, gamer for life and games are fun. If they're not, I wouldn't play them. And I've met so many people through gaming and had really positive experiences. And, you know, uh, you know, I like watching movies and stuff, but it's more fun when I'm the, when I'm the hero, you know what I'm saying? Love it. Thank Guys, you so thanks, much for thanks coming. Thanks so much for having me on the podcast. I really appreciate it. You guys responded well. Uh, and, and thanks for sorting that out for me. And, and you know, it was obviously a misunderstanding. And but I'm so glad that I got to meet you guys. I 100% are. Uh, and and I'll be watching your stuff. And hopefully, I see you guys out there, man. 
And we'll be paying close attention to your journey as well, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Getting to Silver Four. Bronze three. I want I want Silver Four before the split season. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. We'll be watching. All right. All right. Take it That's easy. That's it for this episode, guys. We'll see you next time. See ya.